But I won't say it tonight So I picked a new character And I've just chose my shirt
woke up in the morning, traveling straight into the sun. Told my friends and family I was gone. Looked back in the mirror, thought about who I had become. And I don't think that anything's gone wrong. <clears throat> Jumped out of my suitcase and went traveling down the road. Went back to the place where I was born. Thinking about my future, thinking about how far we have come. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be gone home. And the day goes on, goes on, goes on, goes on. And the day goes on. And the day goes on, goes on, goes on, hold on. And the day goes on. Went down to Virginia, thinking about how to change my name. to blow up and it's gonna be a fine swell day everything's gonna fall down to the ground and turn gray all of my friends family and animals probably going to run away but me i'm feeling curious so i think i just might stay the dow jones just fell down to zero and it's gonna be a fine swell day suits that I've just purchased, gonna have to throw them all away, and slip into something more reasonable, and then dance the night away. I'm riding a pony into the sunset, everything's green and gold, so I'm not in hell yet, and the people who work in my office went on vacation, cause they say that I Pretty cool gift shop And I haven't been there in a while And I've been wondering If it's even still there And the climate has been changing Soon it's gonna change more And we'll figure out all of the details In climate change court Take a ride on my blimp Oh, it's a very strong blimp You can watch movies and play games Riding on it When the sun goes down
slipped into some trousers and rolled out my window. Then went out into the wilderness where I'm going to stay. And it's a Still a long way to go. 
Okay, We're only let's pretend. Late. Fashionably late. Let's pretend this didn't happen. Yeah, we well, have I'm... 30 people on this stream. I've been streaming for 16 hours so far, nonstop. This will be fun. Welcome, everybody, to Green Text Theater Minus. Minus, because Comic isn't here. We're doing I this can't... live from. Well, Silver Chase, seeing how I just got here, um, I want to say hello. You sound as well rested and spiffy as ever. Thanks. I kind of tried. Yes, we're doing this live from the second ever itty bitty death stream. Uh, I guess the screen text theater will be a sequel to the one I had 12 months ago, also on itty's death stream, where I also took over GTT then. And, uh, and I let's think not forget. I was also there. Was I? I don't even remember. Oh. Appleseed and Itty were guests. Oh, and Smog too. You were oh, not there on the panel. I was a guest and this, some other time you did that, you hosted one of these. I think. Uh, God. Uh, anyway, keep going. One of one of the offshoot game shows I ran. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was also that time last October this year when Smug briefly took over a comics show. Uh... But enough chatter, we have green text to read and discuss, and it's time to actually, formally, for real, introduce our guests. Rob. Hello, Rob. Hello, Silver. Hello, Maine. Hello, Dangreen. Hello, everyone in the stream. Hi. And just in case we have people listening, oh, we definitely, we definitely have people listening who may not know who you are, maybe. Uh, so why not introduce yourself and explain what you do. Who are, who's going first? Rob. Oh. Well, I'm a kind of hobby artist, a White Hoffs shipper, big Zootopia fan, and that's really all you need to know about me. I, I love drawing, I love writing comfy, wholesome stories, and read comfy, wholesome stories. I have a horrible Hungarian accent, so deal with it. <laughs> and that's it. Cool. So this is officially your first time on uh, Green Tech Theater, but you have been on one of comics shows before. Uh, as I snooped on comics page, you were on a talking content with TV. So I was. Uh, it was the other guest I, I forgot. Translation Bear. No, I mean besides TV. It was just those two. Oh, okay. on uh, talking content. I, I thought it was three, but I misremembered. And Rob, you also recently posted uh, a new page of Mystic Strip Search. Progress on that has been steady and going on for a long time. It's been over two years now, right? Yes, uh, I have been really working on that comic for a long while now. Didn't I? I didn't really expect it to la uh, last this long. I actually thought that I it would be like 25 pages comic or or less, but it uh, as I was working the script format into the comic format, pages just got longer and longer. And uh, somehow I don't reach the point where <laughs> I see where it will end. Yeah, it's something like more than, uh, it's taking more than four times as long as your previous project, uh, uh, Foxy Teaser. And it is also yeah. uh, a lot longer in page count as well. Yes, indeed. All right, um, and since it's your first time here, how do you think you'll do on your first Green Tech Theater? I remember the first time I showed up on a Green Tech Theater, and I remember it was not great. Aww. Uh, I'm hopeful, but I'm really going to mispronounce a bunch of stuff, so <laughs> it will be fun to listen back. <laughs> oh, we'll see. We'll see. Next, it's time for the well-legged maned wolf. Say hello to the audience and also introduce yourself in case some of them don't know you. Hello, hello. 
I used to write green texts back in the day. Uh, has been quite a while since I last published anything more than like a five-five type thing in the thread that is new. But uh, these days, I mostly sculpt. Been doing that for I don't know about a year now. Yeah, you got started into art streaming, and then uh, mainly it was those sculptures, and I think for a bit pencil sketches. Yeah, I was doing pencil sketches before that. Where'd you get the idea for uh, the little sculptures? Uh, I guess I liked to mess around with that stuff as a kid, and then I figured, you know, why not give that a shot again? So, kind of fell into it, and actually been enjoying that for the most part more than I was enjoying like pencil drawing. Yeah, you found yourself a niche there. I did, yes. Uh, so what happens after you post your pictures of, of what you made? Do you just have a collection of uh, heads and dongs on a shelf somewhere? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do have them on a little shelf, actually. A little bookshelf. i got to organize that. Hopefully no one asks what those are. Yeah, I don't leave the, uh, the loot stuff out. <laughs> Yeah, and I have been uh, one of your editors for some of the stories you've written before. So as your editor, uh, I am wondering something. Are you looking forward to 2021 being the year you finish the evening dawn? Yes, actually. And I did start working on that again. So I do want to get that one uh, done. It's been on hiatus for like two years now. Sweet. And I was only asking that as a joke. I was expecting you to give a joke <laughs> answer. So that's even better. I'm really actually happy to see that happen. Oh, well, thanks. Lastly, Tangerine, uh, you are one of the regular voices on this show normally. But semi-regular. Semi-regular since a uh, comic became semi-regular. Uh, <laughs> so it's time to introduce yourself as well. Say hello to the audience and explain what you do. Hello, audience. Um, I am Tangerine. I uh, am a ZTG veteran, hailing back to the days of Co. Um, I have seen just about everything that there can be seen in ZTG. I um, I don't know when I'll leave, if ever, but I am still trucking along. I am still making art i am currently in the process of drawing something for silver chase that you will see someday i don't know exactly when but it is in the works and i think that a lot of people might really like it um, shit i hope so uh, i i have high hopes don't worry and that is what matters um, and I have a few plans for 2021, nothing too big, but I definitely have a mental notebook for things that I seriously plan on doing, I uh, by next year or possibly by the end of this year, but it depends on how much time I have to work on it. Um, as another note, I don't know if Mains remembered it or not, but when you were talking about things that you had written recently, um, what came to mind was that green text that you had written for one of my pictures from September. Uh, did you remember that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I started writing that. And I was considering writing a part two, and I guess I never did. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. No, I I just I wanted to refresh you on that because I did appreciate that. Um, and part two would be pretty cool to see. Well, thanks. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Cool. And Tendering, you were talking about something you were doing uh, back in November. So in November, my project was writing a story, but you had something else going on for November. Uh, did I? It was black metal in November. Nothing but black metal. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, this wasn't related to my art very much. Um, oh, it's not. I, but how, I was, how, did that, how did that go? It went splendidly. I, I, I managed to keep my pace the entire month. Um, I was listening to at least one new album per day and sometimes two or even three. Um, I had gotten myself back into a few artists that I had first listened to years prior, but I didn't really make a connection to. But with a fresh perspective, I think I was able to I understand and and gel with them much better. Not you, Tangerine, because you're exempt. Rob, Maind, are you doing anything for the advent calendar? Because I sure as hell did, and so did Tangerine. Uh, I kind of forgot that was a thing. Well, it's a thing, and there are daily posts, so you can't, you shouldn't be missing it anyway. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, look for it. I have been checking them out every day, but I couldn't really do anything because every day there was something uh, with family that we have that kind of distracted me. So, like. This weekend was the first one that I actually had some time and I had to use it to uh, catch up with myself about uh, different uh, artsy promises like requests and a commission. And uh, uh, after that, I will be starting to work on the next comic page and oh damn, a comic page is like over 30 hours of work. Uh, <laughs> And I can't really uh, take part in this advent event, but it's it's a really good idea, and I like the art that is great that the others are creating for it. Uh, it's really inspirational. Uh, it gives me some ideas. I just wish I <laughs> I could sit down and actually do those ideas. Mm. Oh yes, it's a matter of bandwidth. Yeah. Um, I find myself really only able to put out a lot of art on the weekends, um, except in special cases. I found it a great stress relief when, when you aren't, aren't pushed to draw something, but uh, you can actually draw what you want. Mm. I'll just make this also a uh, talking content about whatever the hell we're talking about right now, because we actually haven't gotten to any of the green texts yet. Uh, don't worry, it's a 24-hour stream. We have plenty of time. Well, no time like right now. How's that sound? I so, like that. Rob, uh -huh. because this is your first time here, I decided that you are going to be going first. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations, sure. Rob. Looks like you're in the barrel today. I would like you to read this first green text to get us warmed up. Here it is. Please read this post. All right, so I would like to take part in a GGT once, but I just can't because I am European, and by the time Comic houses it, everyone is already off to bed. Walls are papal thin. I won't be in the foreseeable future that things will change. Now, what does GGT stand for? Does that stand for Great Geckering Theater? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> sure does. <laughs> So, Tangerine, can you explain what happened in this post? Um, I thought this one was really interestingly well, uh, well written. Um, this had it, it had some rather simple prose, but I think it worked in its favor. It sounded very conversational um, and very believably so, um, and I think it really nailed the personality of Rob pretty well. Um, whoever wrote this, I think I, I have to commend them for putting in the effort to, to sell that. Indeed. What makes you think it's Rob? Yeah, I, I am pretty much convinced that he could have said this. Well, that's because it's literally him. You remember yes, this post? I, I know. <laughs> 
Uh, I think I remember it. I it's I have been sa- saying these things uh, multiple times, so it could be this post or another. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying that in the in like in the character of someone reading a green text. Oh, I I literally remembered this post uh, that I have said similar things multiple times, but I I also think that. Uh, Others have also said said these things like uh, ASIG is also European. Has he been on Green Text Theater before? To my knowledge, he's never appeared in a in a voice microphone thing. Mm. I don't think he has either. That's interesting, considering how prolific he is in the community. You would think that he would have gotten around to that at some point. No criticizing. I'm just saying, it's it usually happens. Then, although, then again, I don't think Weaver has appeared in one of these either. Asic usually, uh, when I asked him, he says it's uh, just his situation isn't good for microphone. Fair enough. So I found this post completely by accident while I was uh, preparing for this show. Uh, I was searching for GTT and I ended up typing it wrong. That's exactly how I got to this post. I got very lucky. I'm surprised we managed to get a, <laughs> get a surprisingly enriching discussion about this quick little post. So now it's time for something real. Tangerine, real. you're going to be next on this. It's time to read this one. All right. The author makes the note. How about some adoption AU? Question mark. Violet and Judy brushing Nick's tail to comfort him after a bad night or something. <clears throat> and the green text begins. Nick stared at the wall, trying to picture what it looked like in the daylight and failing to. He sat cross-legged on his bed, which was warm, and by all accounts he should have felt safe. He didn't. Seasonal winter night terrors. Fox thing, apparently. Which meant that Judy and Violet had to sleep with him. Which meant that Judy and Violet would wake up and calm him down every time he had a bout of outright despair in his sleep. Nowadays, that was every night. A soft brush stroked along his fluffy tail over and over. Violet was methodically, but gently, grooming it in an attempt to relax him. From beside Violet, beside him, behind him, Judy's sleepy voice rang out like a bell in a silent forest. Please let me braid it, Nicky. No. You're no fun. Stop bothering him, Judy. Time and place. Judy whimpered and crawled forward, leaning her head on Nick's shoulder. I'm sorry, Nicky. Don't worry about it, Carrots, Nick said. Said taking one of her paws in his own. Feeling better, Nick? asked Violet. Nick shut his eyes, giving up on staring at the wall and focusing on his sister's and on his own heartbeat. He was here, and he was now, and he was fine. He was safe. Maybe a few more minutes of brushing, he said. He could hear the smile in Violet's voice. Okay. And that's it. Thank you, Tangerine. Well done. Uh, maimed. Yes, yes. Can you explain what just happened in this story? It took me a little bit to, like, get exactly what the relationships were, but it seems like Judy and Violet are, uh, like, his siblings here. Like, he was adopted into, like, the, the Hops house. Yep. Nick was, that is. Adoption AU. I guess they're all kids. Yeah, they're uh, trying to calm Nick down from some nightmares that he had. Sounds pretty cute to me. Yeah, I was a bit confused at the the mention of sisters until I remembered this was an Adoption AU story. Yeah, and the beginning here is actually just quoting someone who's requesting this exact story. Because this was from 
earlier this year when Otterly took some requests. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is Otterly? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, is he here? He is not. What a shame. <laughs> He's probably asleep right now. It's like 8.30 in the morning where he is. Yeah. And he says he's dead asleep, and I'm sure he is. He stayed up pretty late. Uh, did he? Yeah. Uh, he showed up uh, past midnight his time, and he went on for a few more hours writing, just like slam writing some smut. <laughs> As Sounds you like him. <laughs> so you've identified that this is an adoption AU story. How well do you think it handles, it captures this idea of sibling love? Something familial, not romantic. Yeah, I think it did that. I think it did that pretty well. I think the only thing I would have done would have been like to mention that they were like his sisters a little earlier on, because at first I was confused. Like it kind of like threw me when it said, "Please let me braid it, Nikki." I'm like, "Wait, is she an adult or a kid?" And I'm like, "Oh, okay, so she's like his his sister or whatever." Yeah, it does hang a lot on the original request for context. Another thing going on here, uh, the fox thing, as claimed early on in the story, the seasonal winter night terrors. What exactly do you think Otterly is trying to show here? Um... I guess I'll take it as one of those things just to like quickly establish the premise for a short story without like having to expand on some big thing. You know, just like a quick hand wave, like, oh, it's a fox thing, you know? Yeah, he certainly didn't waste too many words trying to explain every single thing. Uh, just a quick way to get Violet and Judy into uh, Nick's room. Just to show with him. Just have a wholesome moment, yes. Oh, sorry. I'm not, not my place to talk. No, you can totally talk. Go ahead. No, oh, uh, I just uh, wanted to also say that I noticed this in a lot of green text that since uh, we are limited by the number of words, characters we can use, it's often just a roll with it situ situation where we uh, take every information that comes up in the story as a stated fact and canon of that specific green text's world. Makes sense. Uh, another thing I want to try to get everyone's opinion on Nick calls Judy carrots. Do you think that makes sense in this adoption AU? If he's adopted by a family of rabbits, could he plausibly call one rabbit carrots? That's actually something I noted too. Uh, it felt out of place. Yeah. Um, I guess anything is really possible in uncharted territory like this. If you thought about it enough, I'm sure you could make an explanation for that. But no, I suppose in the context of the movie, it doesn't make as much sense as it probably could. Um, because Nick adopts huh, the Carrot's nickname as a way to mock Judy initially. And it only becomes a term of endearment later on um so assuming that is how it got its genesis here um it it it, it ends up being on a little bit more of shaky ground i think maybe it can be explained but uh, because it looks like judy is uh, uh, still younger than nick here uh, and she wants to braid uh, his fur, and it's 
maybe Nick is annoyed a little bit by uh, the small Judy, and that's why uh, he adopted this carrots uh, nickname. Maybe it would be more in place if he would call him baby carrots or something. <laughs> but I don't Perhaps. know. So you think it's possible that it was kind of AU, uh, the carrot's name would still stick. Maybe maybe they're just well, close uh, siblings then. Like Tangerine, said, like Tangerine said, uh, you could find an explanation since uh, there is so little context around the world. Uh, we have to put explanation around the whole thing to, uh, if we want to justify its content. There is a lot of theorizing and we, we, with theorizing, we could give justification to, to just about anything. Yeah, and Otterly did that pretty quickly early on in his story. He just breezed through a lot of uh, uh, AU uh, facts just really fast. Uh, oh, I was just reading the chat. People are saying F and ripped or something, but uh, Itty is lamenting the status of his projects. F. Hmm. Uh, let's uh, go back to one of the things Rob said, uh, Judy still being, you interpret Judy being still a younger kid. Uh, from what I've seen, a lot of adoption AU stories tend to show Nick as a more mature, older brother. Makes sense, uh, given their character's uh, canon in the movie. Uh, in this movie, we see the the relationship a little bit different because... Here, Nick is the vulnerable one who needs to be taken care of. They have this, seems like there's this policy of uh, sharing burrows and helping each other. Uh, you think it would be believable for Nick to be the vulnerable one who needs help? Or is it just a a case-by-case -case thing? This They just help each other from... For, whenever they need help. Uh, I guess it depends on how they're portrayed in the AU, because I feel like I've, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I feel like I've seen differing um, interpretations of the adoption AU. Um, some of them pinning Nick and Judy as the same age or roughly the same age or others having them have a more noticeable age difference. Um, and I feel like that would change the dynamics between them, depending, you know, on which you choose. Um, and if they were the same age, or roughly the same age, then they wouldn't really have the same dynamic they have in the movie, where Nick is the more seasoned and, um, as at least as he believes, more uh, wise one compared to Judy, who has to kind of bestow his wisdom upon her. Um, and if he were still clearly the older sibling in the adoption AU, then he would probably fill that role too. But if they're about the same age, or perhaps even Judy is older than him, then that uh, dynamic changes considerably. So I have what, nothing else to add, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Tang Green said it makes a lot of sense. Uh, there are so many different interpretations and versions of this adoption now EU uh, that uh, it's hard to really pinpoint whenever it would be uh, in character for the child Nick uh, to be this vulnerable. What we can do is determine whenever uh, how how uh, much personality this child Nick adopts from the real Nick's personality, in which I think we could say that it's a good um, comparison. 
if we think about it in the movie, Nick has evolved this harsh exterior, but deep down he is still wounded, and the only time he opens up and actually reveals Vornulep, <laughs> this, this is what I said, I'm not a native English speaker, what is the word? War, vulnerable. Vulnerability. Yes, that's, that's the one, thank you. Big word. Yes. So when he reveals that uh, is when they are riding the gondola in uh, the rainforest district. And after that, he goes back into his shell, kind of, but still trusts Judy more. I think that kind of Nick can be seen here. He is kind of letting himself to be vulnerable, but he's also... Uh, keeping a sort of distance, like he, he says a stern no when Judy pleads him to let him let her braid his fur, and he doesn't straight up say that he needs to be protected, that he needs them to be there to feel safe. He just says that maybe brush my tail a little bit more. But which is not a direct um, pointer to it that he needs them. He It just points that he wants his tail to be brushed, which is kind of that I, I show that I'm vulnerable, but not too much. Mm. I, I try to hide it with something. And I think that's uh, why this Nick is a good child version of the movie Nick. Cool. So uh, mainly then Otterly is writing his adoption at you the way he wants it to. Mm, I I don't think that's the takeaway from what we what we discussed. I think that Otterly uh, uh, took the real Nick's personality into consideration and try to um, transform that into a younger version. I think he uh, he he thinks these things through. Okay, it okay. is. It I is see. Well, it is a well planned green text. All right, then. I have a question for all of you. How would you rate this on the cozy scale? How cozy is the story? Zero is a cactus. One is uh, a warm bed in a winter night. I would give this two hot chocolates. One hot chocolate is a blanket. I mean, I'm not what sure about, what the oh. equivalency is between these uh, scales, but it, it does sound like a uh, warm hot chocolate while wearing a blanket. Yeah, that does sound uh, good. So we're loving the coziness of this then. Yeah. Excellent. Any last comments before we move on to the next screen text? No. No from Tangerine? Rob? Nade? I'm good. Yep. Cool. Then we've exhausted all our topics for this. Let's leave Otterly's tail petting fetish for now, and we will move on to the next screen text. How preposterous and scandalous tail petting good god it's gotten into people these days uh who's next main wolf i think this one's going to you check that out all righty so from may of this year this world will spin no matter what, depending on my mood that's either super reassuring or really depressing. My smile feels heavy today. Guess, guess which mood I'm in. Sun is shining, warm and uncaring. The world keeps turning, dependable and thoughtless all at once. It's like you can't help where you're born or who you're born as. Controlling how the world makes you feel is like trying to fight off a storm with your bare paws. You can only bury yourself underground and wait for the storm to pass. Smile like it's your shelter. Right now, everyone's either working or at school. There's no folks to talk with, no one to interact with down there, 
So I took a deep breath and made my way upstairs, all the way up to the roof of my building, taking a seat on the le uh, on the edge. I don't know how long I've been up here. I like to stick with what I know. I'm not very smart. I don't know what kind of job I'd like to have. Not even sure I want one. I worked as a cover guy for a janitor at some point. That up. I did okay for a bit, but I can't stay focused. I forget things. I get distracted. I'm clumsy. I like those guys who work there, but blue collar jobs are really, well, let's just say they're pretty traditional. My coworkers were pretty old fashioned, but not in the cool way that Al is. Point is, I wish I functioned better. I wish my brain actually worked. I'm supposed to be looking for work, but I'm scared of disappointing more folks. The guy I was coming for wasn't very happy with me. I gave him a bad rep because he vouched for me and I didn't live up to their expectations. I'm a fuck up, I know. I don't like it. If I knew I could do a job. If I knew I could do a good job, then I'd jump into a new job in a heartbeat. But I can't trust myself to do anything I'm not already good at. I'm scared of the disappointment. I take another deep breath. Exhale. This is why I don't like being alone. I remember stuff I'd rather forget. Thank you, Main. Now, Rob, I hope you've been following along with this story. Can you explain what is going on? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, uh, well, that was that was deep. Uh, I take a jump and say, I, I feel like this is probably from Ozzy's perspective from Backstreet. Very correct. Yes, it's really um, an interesting point of what could possibly be on the mind of someone that is aware of his mental impurities and uh, it fights them but uh, is kind of tired of always losing it's uh, it's a really heartbreaking and heart-wrenching uh, thing to read through and listen through and uh, it's kind of also shows why Ozzy depends so much on his friends and why it's uh, it's so important to have people that can help you forget about uh, your mistakes and troubles instead of letting you wallow over them because um, that is what leads too often to very serious depression and other mental illnesses that makes even makes the situation even worse and i i really after reading this through what i the feeling that i got is that um i i'm not hopeful hopeful for ozzy and i i think this was kind of a point that i want Ozzy to get better, but seeing things through his pessimistic and uh, heartbroken eyes, it's hard to be optimistic. The green text wants to, wants us to live through the problem of someone stuck in this kind of uh, hopeless situation. We, you can't just tell someone to we stop being sad, <laughs> but just. I'm depressed, but stop be being depressed. That's not how it works. When you it's never that easy. See, it's never that easy. When you don't see a way out from a situation, that it that lack of hope is inflicting uh, your thought process and your ability to see options. And I think the that was the point of the green text to help uh, people a little bit see this. Mm. All right. Yeah. Tangerine, you were going to say something? Well, was I going to be next? Uh, 
if you want to be, I'll ask another question. Okay. Um, yeah, you can ask another one. Cool. Is that, so Rob nailed it, guessing that uh, the character in the story is Ozzy, even though it's never mentioned with words. Was was that uh, your suspicion as well when you were going through this? Maimed as well. Did you feel like you could tell who it was? Uh, um, I'll admit I have not. Oh, sorry. No, you can go ahead. All right. Uh, I'll admit I have not read all of Pack Street, so the only clue to me that this was even a Pack Street thing was like the one mention of Al. The no other Pack Street characters are mentioned, I don't think, at least not by name. And that was the only pointer too. And uh, Tangerine. Um, for a moment. I thought it was Remy, but then I took that back soon afterwards because it it definitely feels uncharacteristic of him, uh, some things here. He does put himself down uh, occasionally, but Remy has more of an air of of self-righteousness than this. Um, he He finds more ways to justify his thought process and his actions and kind of tries to rationalize himself as being unjustly criticized uh, even in later chapters um, although he does that less um, you know it's a gradual process um, it isn't really characteristic for him to to I uh, to just beat himself up to this extent very much. He does it occasionally in a couple chapters, but he doesn't really dwell on it for that long most of the time. Um, and when he does, it's when he has done something I uh, really out of line um, and not just a general malaise like this. Um, <clears throat> His spirits are generally a little bit higher and not as not as hopeless as this. Um, he's able to bounce back from uh, those things a little bit better, or at least cope with them better. Um, whereas this seems like it's uh, more like. It's it's written more from the perspective of somebody who is who feels them they've been kicked in the dirt for years on end, and um, the one that fits that bill the most is Ozzy, definitely. Um, even though he tries to hide that, you brought up this connection with uh, Remy. We see something that happens a lot. In, uh, there's this one thing that happens a lot in Pax Street, and that is Remy not being fully honest in his narration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I no, I I guess I did notice that too. That there is a bit of an unreliable narrator uh, aspect to Pax Street too. Yeah, and do you think uh, does this come into this story as well? You think it, it is? It's... Go ahead. I was gonna elaborate more on my question. Uh, uh, yeah, do you think is he is he holding anything back? He seems to be pretty open about uh, his problems, his situation. It uh, um. Go ahead. I f I feel like this is still an unreliable narrator in the sense that the narrator here is so clouded by their their I their doomsaying judgment that they are seeing things that aren't there. And this is something that I can relate to. Um, I, I don't think that I have major depressive disorder and I, but I've never all, I've also never been diagnosed for it. Um, but I do know that, in certain occasions, I'm prone to falling into the same line of thinking as this, where I start to look into things more than I think I really should. I 
believe things to, I, I start seeing things that probably don't even exist and I start seeing people as more treacherous and backstabbing as they actually are, or I would be able to see in regular circumstances. Um, and I feel like in, in cases like those that I know what's up, that I can see behind the, the, the veil that, it, that I usually have over me and that um that reality is what i'm seeing right there and then that that people are are treacherous and and that um that i'm also generally quite worthless in uh, in comparison um and it i uh, it's a very profoundly different mindset to be in and it's also quite terrifying in retrospect um because your judgment can so quickly and so easily turn around like that and you don't really notice that it's even happening until it's past and um i, I imagine that a lot of people can can fall into some very dangerous paths if if that doesn't remedy itself right away the uh level of realness in this story that goes beyond just this plot yes um it, it's again it's it's from the perspective of somebody who has fallen deep into this trap and sees the world in a very poisoned and and i uh, overall kind of altered state um one that is probably not very grounded in reality but in, more grounded in in a warped perspective of reality where um where things are much more gloom than they they probably would be to somebody else but when you're in that kind of thought process you don't really think very rationally. I mean, you think you're thinking rationally and perfectly so, but you aren't. I, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just speaking from my perspective. I don't mean to project that on anybody else. Yeah, Nade and Rob, do you, do you see this kind of, uh, uh, gritty reality coming through through in the story is there a level uh, of relatability to uh, uh ozzy's struggles in you first all right uh yeah i'd say so i feel like most people have felt those kind of self doubts maybe not to that degree but I like most people have felt self doubts like that at some point in their life, you know, and that kind of inner monologue going. So, yeah, it's, uh, I'd say it's relatable. And Rob? I, uh, I agree that it's really, re <clears throat> I agree that it's relatable. Uh, I'm, I have felt similar feelings. I experienced this, I experienced this warp re reality when, uh, I thought, I thought I knew what other people think, and uh, I expected the worst from them. While there, there was really no um, such thing going on. What I thought, it's really hard to overcome it and trust yourself or others when you actually think you know the right answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that was something that I especially related to because just a week or two ago I was in that same mindset where I after I had had some kind of altercation with my boss and I was thinking like brooding very much about it for the day following 
until she apologized to me. And then I realized that basically everything I had thought about was incorrect and was a false assumption. But it seemed the most rational thing when I was thinking it. it I, I, um, and, and I, I have to try and figure out how to stop falling into that mindset if I can. In this case, I think this author re really made a hit. You think uh, they carved out plenty of room to make more of this? It's like a Freeman's mind, but for Pack Street. Yeah, I, uh, I, I certainly think so. Um, this... This is kind of it, it has kind of a uh, a almost um stream of consciousness prose and um kind of from the perspective of someone thinking that in the moment like a I, a translation of well, well I just said that um and I think this could could be applied to a lot of scenarios, just the, oh God, I don't even know how to say it. You probably understand what I'm, what I'm trying to get across though. Yeah. I think um, we've, we've gotten really deep on how this makes us feel. Uh, yeah. is there anything else, uh, Anyone has to say about this? It, um... Pack Street usually isn't a very dark series, per se. It has drama, and it has moments of, of, if you will, realness. But it usually doesn't delve into the... a, a topic such as this. And... While that's generally frowned upon because that kind of thing is not always executed very well, I would like to see more of this if it's executed in this fa in this fashion because I think it it is very interesting to me. It's not really like grim dark. It it I, it's a little more tasteful than that. This could be some. Uh... And all those chapters where Ozzy's something is, uh, there's something going on with Ozzy and it's not really clear what. And this would be, this would fill in those gaps in uh, Remy's lack of perception on this. Yes. Especially since the whole story is told from Remy's perspective, besides the side stories and his clouded perspective at that. Well, I think we've gone pretty far with this green text. I think this is what's so great about these things. They're so compact, but they can give a lot of story anyway. Indeed. So thank you for this green text. Anonymous author who originally submitted this to comic, and then I it's scooped totally it from him. Different. <laughs> really cool. Uh, next is going to be the last one I'll have for today because it's long. Also, it's pretty new. Uh, and the series is ongoing. Uh, this one comes in one, two, three, four posts. So, oh my God. It's time to take turns. And Tangerine, you will be going first on this very long thing. Oh, God. Okay, I'm very pleased to, to talk about this one. Then please go ahead. Yes, uh, this is actually an honor to talk about this one because this is one of my favorites in recent memory. Um, I am honored to 
wait did did rob get the chance to oh wait he did okay wait am i no he I, was up I, first. I'm losing track. uh you gave me the joke one oh the yeah okay okay I then rob the, the then index. you will read the first post i miscounted yes i <laughs> okay in the earliest times, the first enclave of mice lay in valley of wood and stone. The distant walls of earth cupped within the sky and all its stars. The great trees held up the sky and below them ran endless fields of green. The river fell from the fertile cliffs, winding from the unreachable edge of the world and giving out it touched in the valley of life. It was said that no mouse could walk the valley length of bread, such was its distance. But no mouse would choose to leave. Here mice had sprung up, and it was here that they stayed, making their homes in soft earth and feasting on the grains and fruits that grew there. At the head of the valley, a ridge rose, and atop it lay a mountain keep of crumbling stone. These broken lands overlooked all the meadows spread below it. At midsummer it arms eclipses, the longest rays of sun, in the deepest winter nights, wind hollowed through its rides and walls. It was home to the first wise owl, the one that called Nietzsche, the master of the valley who came and went on silent wings. Wow. Should I read the white part? Yes. The narrative of, of the narrative of the acronym myth is true to be fictional. The location in the story lacks specific details that could be matched to real region. The general setting, however, in, is consistent with archaeological circular findings that suggest freshwater valleys were among the first regions that the preconcrenites rodent enclaves developed in. They had enough natural shelter and food prevalence to support larger populations. Much of the contributory art and storytelling from small mammals perceives and portrays the world as a very large place. Thank you, Rob. Uh, you, I think you accidentally got the hardest post in uh, what I'm going to show. Uh, yes. We are going to talk about those uh, crazy words after this. Uh, yeah, Tangerine, you are next with the second post. Unfortunately, you got the post with the word archaeotaxological, <laughs> um, but that's okay. You you did very well. Anyway, let me read the second post. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Nixia was wise beyond time. He saw and heard everything that transpired in the valley, and all knowledge passed from him. Nixia brought the sun up and chased it down. Each dawn and dusk, the first and last thing on the horizon was his silent silhouette. The flashes of his changing plumage when he passed overhead heralded the onset of each new season. The mice who learned to interpret these signs came to understand when the cold was due, or when the early mornings would light the valley again. Those who dared to follow his shadow toward the sunset came upon seeds and fresh springs from the river, and land in which new grains and fruits grew in plenty. And so the first enclave expanded. It spread to the river and to the southern lands where the ground turned sandy and dry. But such dominion came with a price. Foragers now roamed far and wide, collecting even more of the grains and seeds they needed from, from the plenty of the valley. The cold seasons they endured were long and unforgiving. And even huddled in the safety of their warrens, their many months, the, the many months, sorry, the many, holy crap. The many mouths to feed meant every bit of food was precious, and every day brought new uncertainty. Descriptions of a large raptor or other predatory bird in contemporary works are consistent with potential encounters Murine likely had with the, first had with genus Bubo, the true owls, in the late Pliocene. The, arche the archaeotaxological record suggests that as early enclave societies developed, their populations experienced localized resource pressure. Eventually, there was not enough food to sustain growth. It's likely that after a brief period of overshoot, populations stabilized at just below a carrying capacity. Right. Things are getting crazy. Maind, 
Are you ready for the third post? Yes, yes. All right. Let's go. It was one such day in the hurried preparations for another winter that Nicotia came to the enclave. He cried out to them from a perch on the tallest tree in the valley, you mice of the forest floor, why do you scurry so? One mouse, bolder than the rest, came up from the burrow mouth and peered up at the horned silhouette. Great owl, we must prepare for the long cold of winter. The harvests are thin, and the roots and seeds must be made safe. Nictia turned his unblinking eyes down to the mouse and said, What is your name, fearless one? I am called Apodemus. Then, Apodemus, I will show you the knowledge you and your kin may use to thrive here, even in the deepest of winters, so that you need never cower in the cold and dark again. So Nictia enlightened Apodemus and the first enclave. He taught them the use of new tools, with one stone upon another, taken from the base of the great mountain. He showed them how to grind their seeds and their dried fruits and to mix them with water from the river springs so that none of the bounty went to waste. Now larders overflowed, not just in the warm seasons, but in the winter as well. The enclave grew stronger, healthier, and yet more numerous, so they came to master the whole valley. From the river's edge to the climbing scarps of the northern ridge where the stone mountains sat. In time, Nictia bestowed more gifts to the first enclave. His feathers plucked so that the mice may catch the wind and turn mills to grind their grain. His down he turned into cloaks of such exceptional fineness and warmth that those who wore them could survive even the harshest winter storms. And from his talons he fashioned great clearing scythes so that a single mouse could do the work of ten in the fields. But Nectia's gifts came at a price. You maimed, and finally, it's the last post, and Rob, it is your turn again. This is among the first historical records of persistent agriculture from any mammals. Subfamily Muranei is also notable for making rapid and significant advances in agricultural technology, from rudimentary slash and burn techniques to more industrialized wind-driven milling technology in just a few thousand years. It is thought that this first agricultural revolution allowed rotten clades to quickly support massive population sizes and ranges, which they still enjoy today. Incident use of avian feathers and tools is disputed. It is more likely that Maureen initially used leaves, grasses, and other more readily available materials as meal cells. Similarly, there is little substantial evidence that any group within Mymorpha used raptor talents as tools. Their portrayal here is likely mythological embellishment of more rudimentary bronze blade work. With that said, Burain was no doubt acquainted with talents potential as sharp piercing or cutting implements. See the next placard for more details on evolution of new tropic arrangements. Are we going to be reading the, the rest of this story too? Uh, I'm going to stop for now because I kind of had the feeling that this late in the stream I would be getting a bit tired, and I am. Uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> 17 hours. Yeah, uh, fair enough. It's very interesting piece. By the way, I haven't read it yet. This is the first time I'm seeing it. Well, oh shit! Find all of them. These are just the four I've picked out. Uh, it yeah. goes on. There's a bit more before this, and there's a bunch after this. And I'm pretty sure uh, Falk is the one who made this. I'm pretty sure Falk is uh, continuing this. Not. It's not even pretty sure Falk explicitly mentioned that it was him writing it. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. So this is the first time seeing this as well. <laughs> so this is a hell of a s series going on, but let's instead of just asking one of you to summarize it, let's 
try to go through it one by one, uh, uh, post by post together. So in this series of four posts, I've picked out, uh, what's the story we see develop here? Um, do you want me to start? Uh, take turns or just say something when you have something to say. Okay. Um, well, it, as it might be obvious to the reader, um, these are presented as a, a uh, sort of archaeological or otherwise historical text. Um, as I don't know if it would be a spoiler or not, but it's mentioned in the last post of the series so far that these are texts made for the Zootopia Natural, Natural History Museum. Um, and yeah. I, I don't think that's a, that's a spoiler because I had the same feeling that uh, this, is, this is something that you would read in a museum. Yeah. These placards black art, black that explain certain texts, meanings, and explain their origin and stuff. Mm. And um, this is a a topic that I have ex in considerable interest in, both in the perspective of the fandom and the source material, and in general. Um, I have a certain interest in archaeology and in, uh, uh, what's the other word? Um, uh, Social studies? Yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm searching for a more specific word, but I'm... I'm um, anthropology, maybe? Yeah, anthropology, thank you. Um, <laughs> those are two things that interest me very much. And I mentioned in reply to one of these posts in the thread that it was in that two of the channels on YouTube that I watch the most often nowadays are the channels of Simon Roper and Jackson Crawford, um, two separate channels. One is a anthropology student who makes videos usually um, focusing on um, the development of Germanic languages, uh, and he's also fluent in Old English. Um, and Palmer. yes, very much so. But that's not even the best of it. The channel, I uh, Jackson Crawford's channel, is the channel of a University of Colorado professor who is fluent in Old Norse, has a published translation of the Havamal. Uh, and um, often has videos set to the backdrop of his native Wyoming, where he will recite Old Norse, Old Norse poetry by memory on the top of a mountain. Um, and it is very intriguing, both in his presentation style and the topics that he covers. Um, I love very dearly the the topics that he covers of social developments in in old scandinavia um what old texts can tell us about scandinavian society um and general linguistic uh, topics as well it's all very very intriguing to me and it's no surprise that i would also find this very intriguing um because i think the topic of Applying that sort of study to the universe of Zootopia is very interesting because even more so than humans and their, and their environments, um, the environments around early mammals, like sapient mammals, would be by, shaped even more by um, you know their general environment and then their social structures and their... Um, and their physical makeups. And this in particular kind of frames a AI raptor as being a god figure because um, raptors would have been something to fear very greatly for uh, early 
you know, rodent species or societies rather, or rather enclaves as this story uh, calls it. Yeah. Also, um, uh, shout out to Aka, yeah, yeah. who also says he likes Simon Roper's channel as well. Oh, very much. I, um, I, I, uh, I, um, I appreciate that you also watch him. He, um, he has a very, um, uh, very nice presentation style where he, um, he does things in like familiar settings, like in his, in a room of his house or in his garden or, uh, out in the forest somewhere. Um, he has himself just close in frame. It, it's kind of framed like you're sitting next to him in a chair beside him. And, uh, he's talking to you like a, a good acquaintance or a friend just musing on a subject that he's knowledgeable about. And it's very, I, uh, um, approachable and very nice to listen to. He also looks like he just walked out of 1969, but in a good way. <laughs> what a badass. Uh, wow, we got really lost in this. Uh, uh, oh, right, Rob. Oh, right. Uh, we are going to be talking about some words, so if you uh, need to know what they are, please ask. Uh, let's go back to uh, oh, going step by step through the story. So, so as Tangerine started off with, uh, this part of the story starts with little enclaves of mice just living in a limited area. And it's a myth, right? So, uh, what happens in the later posts? Uh, I can't really summarize it uh, easily. Because it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot taken back. But generally speaking, what I want, uh, I also wanted to. Uh, say and talk about this kind of mythological expansion of the Zootopia universe because I'm a big fan of that too. Uh, I have that's one particular reason I really enjoyed uh, Bonnie's Rabbit Clans Fox and other stuff which inspired me to also uh, analyze and uh, explore how Zootopia's world could have developed, even though I don't have much archaeological experience and uh, I don't know much about um, evolutionary developments, but uh, this kind of social structures of tribes and stuff, um, it's a fun thing to explore and guess especially in fiction where you can come up with stuff that's um, more original or animal based than a real life human social structure and uh, as for example People have been discussing uh, for a while now whenever Zootopia has similar similar uh, structure of countries as the human world. And uh, by my understanding, I don't think that could have possibly developed because let's face it, a mouse nation would have been simply trampled by a neighboring wolf or other nation because they simply don't go on such landside uh, as a single grain farm of for a wolf would be the size of an entire ma mouse city or even just a half grain farm would be the size of a mo bigger mouse city if they manage to protect and build on that side, which is uh, kind of 
the thing that is addressed here that Moses couldn't have possibly even developed language and technology if they wouldn't have the ability to fend for themselves in these smaller enclaved colonies which have the natural which gave them natural natural protection from predators and other tribes other species that developed sentience and were probably hunting it's all this kind of evolution in zootopia is always um, an interesting thing to think about because if the only way that none of the today's species went extinct that we see in zootopia is if they developed uh, sentience intelligence rather around the same time and they all decided not to completely destroy each other because in human in human history in human archaeological evidences we human cavemen tribes decimated each other often when they found each other mm-hmm. there are many there, there are many lines of uh, ape apes that could have became a human like intellect but they died out ma- mainly because of interference from the homo sapiens yeah species. we became dominant species of the planet because we destroyed the other possibilities perhaps most prominently the neanderthals yeah no so, we are real big fans of this kind of yeah. origin of the world stuff are we like i yeah. said this is one of my favorite green texts in recent memory if not in all the memory that i have of green texts so wow. congratulations so, to Falk. so in the so in the following posts we kind of get introduced into the uh, into this ancient mouse society how it developed and set foot in a claving and through its kind of like historical own historical texts they tell their stories and we get an analysis of their actions and their uh, the results of their actions or the actual idea behind it i kind of li- uh, like it that um, most mi- mythological actions are rich rationalized in stuff because um for example uh how how tangreen also pointed out how uh all could be perceived as a godlike figure and that's why they are respecting it and use its own natural behavior as some sort of pointer for winter or other signs mm. Oh yeah, but, you should read the the rest of these posts. You'll see more of this interaction with uh, what I what I was really surprised about. What I was really surprised about is in the last post. Can I say it? Go ahead. It didn't try to rationalize at all that the owl speak. It didn't try to tell that uh, these kind of birds are not capable of speech, and it was probably just mythological. Uh, stuff. It didn't try to deny this ancient religion's uh, basis. Mm-hmm. This, uh, this ancient sacred text's content I, um, on that oh, regard. I, I don't think it was in this pr- specific cap, but it might have been in one of the first two posts in this series that it makes specific mention in a um, in, a, in one of the asides that to paraphrase it, there is no evidence that uh, avians have uh, mammal-like intelligence. Uh, uh, yeah, the, I see it that way. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, mm-hmm. That means that then it wouldn't repeat itself. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you see this really visual difference in the post itself. The green text part is the myth, and then there's... Yeah. A bit the, of follow up of, of reality after that. Yes, the the archeolo- the scientific explanation of how how and why was it written down like that. 
yeah um i really like this uh, setup this kind of uh part it's he's actually writing two fan fictions at the same time kind of like he writes a, a mythological fantasy uh, tribe story while also writing someone analyzing it in the future yeah and an oral tradition story and a um and modern the, uh historical yes modern historical analysis um and uh one of the last posts in this series also mentions i uh, which specific mammal it was who did this translation yeah and um, uh ooh. i will leave it up to uh, you two maind and rob to uh look through the archives and find the rest of this series it, it should, it should yeah, actually be on the guru uh uh tangerine and i and i think uh yes well on the burrow okay yeah um, pe people have uploaded uh some of these pictures that falk drew for the story and we've left comments kind of, with the pictures I kind of asking i kind of was asking earlier why aren't good green text also archived in the burrow it would be so much easier to find a good green text that way <laughs> there were when the boor first started it seemed like people were making efforts to upload green text caps too but that stopped at a certain point and it is for reasons that I am not aware of, but um, for, I guess... ar for archival purposes, it probably would be better to uh, to upload them. I just never really got around to it because I wasn't sure what the stance on it was. But I also probably shouldn't worry too much about that because I'm the administrator. That's right. <laughs> Suck it, yeah. sleepy you badger are... lover. You make the rules. <laughs> Yeah, if you are the administrator, you make the rules so that you cannot just upload it whenever. Yeah, I um, guess I guess one reason is that uh, it's all uh, it's probably harder to uh, give text, uh, text yeah. for a green text That's... like what characters are present, what is the theme of it, what is the genre genre of it. I I guess that's why probably it's hard. Even yeah, if and... they would be uploaded, it would be hard to filter them to mm. find a specific one. Yeah, yeah, and you know what we call a buru for text? We call that a blog, and we don't upload <laughs> images of the text. We just upload the text. Uh, but uh, we can we can talk about this later. Someone, uh, someone who's listening should go ask this uh, when the question and answer segment comes up. So then we can talk about this some more, and then maybe yeah. something will happen. You should uh, I, you should ask like the administrator of the boor or something. He'd probably have a better answer for you. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, let's get back on to uh, uh, the thing we are actually supposed to be talking about, which is this green text. And you guys are great guests because I had a bunch of notes on things we could talk about this green text, and you've all just ran onto it on your own. I didn't even have to uh, uh, prompt you onto it. So that's what great. It makes my life notes? easy. Uh, I took your... Tangerine, I missed what you said. Could you say that again? Uh, even if you're not really going to make much use of, that, of them, what were your notes? Uh, everything we talked about, pretty much. Oh, okay. I, I have a, a few more things to lead into, which is those crazy words. Uh, we saw that especially in the first post. We saw archaeotaxological and congressine. So we're seeing Falk use these made up but pretty scientific sounding words. What do you think about its impact in, in terms of the immersiveness? Uh, Rob, you had some difficulty reading those words. It took me a few looks at it to understand it myself. Uh, do you think that was that was a a speed bump in understanding it, or do you think it it helped fit the story better into the world? It helped fit the story better because I have uh, in the university I have read ton of ang English language based uh, 
literature and uh, such scientific researches to get my diploma. So I kind of have no problem uh, with understanding and reading it. I have a problem with pronouncing it <laughs> only. Mm. How much of a problem do you have with reading legal text? Legal text? That's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a lot of problems with reading legal text. Don't worry. Even native English speakers often have issue with legalese. I have problem reading legal text in my own language. <laughs> that, mm. that's, they, they purposefully make them un totally under not understandable <laughs> yeah well the specific intention for that is to make it as impossible to interpret wrongly as as they can um to make it the the intent and language as clear and as succinct as it can possibly be and my uh, my knowledge of hungarian comes in specific phrases i've seen in 70s and 80s commercials <laughs> <laughs> So, Falk, uh, sorry, Maine, uh, were you going to say something? Oh, um, so did Falk also do the art for this, or who who did the art uh, for this? Yes, this is Falk art as well. Yes. Uh, Falk. A bit before these posts, uh, explaining that these are, uh, I forget the exact words, early, just uh, the first art. Uh, they're comfortable with sharing. Mm. Ah, well, they, and and props to him this. for throwing his hat into the ring. Yeah. Uh, I completely lost track of what was going on. Uh, Main, was that you were just asking that? Oh yeah. I'm gonna have to check out the rest of this story uh, later. Definitely sounds quite interesting. And you got absolutely gripped into it. I love I did, this yes. series as well. And it's gonna keep going on. Oh, right. And I was going to uh, keep going on this line of discussion I had. Uh, Falk makes this big power move here using some technical big words, and then just not explaining them. Do you, do you think you figured out what they meant from yeah, uh, the story? Yeah, I, I just kind of uh, I just kind of assumed it was a real word that I hadn't heard before. I, I could, like, from I context, for I just figure out what he meant. You only get ZTG links. Yeah, yeah, I, I googled it too. I'm like, okay, I guess archaeotextological isn't a real word, but um... But it, you can figure yeah. out the meaning of it pretty well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so not... I'd say it's okay. Yeah. Is that how you felt, Rob? Uh, yes, I kind of did similar things before because uh, I don't remember if I did it in the green text or something. I kind of came up with the idea that uh, maybe instead of saying uh, vulpes vulpes for a red fox, it would be uh, homo vulpe, vulpex or something because uh, we 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 base the Latin names with on the me on the original meanings, and I guess that's the situation here too. That the actual uh, Latin name for this scientific uh, part was partially replaced to represent more animals other than the human uh, family tree. I just love those. Those really bland scientific names. Just some Europeans are like, we need to make sense of these species, and this is the one we are most familiar with. Uh, it's it's the red fox. Uh, we'll call it in Latin fox fox. Yeah. Same with the most common type of gorilla is gorilla gorilla, and the most common type of rat is rat rat. <laughs> Thank you, Carl Linnaeus. A well-designed system. Uh, and also, that's one thing that's always uh, stood out to me as a little strange with Zootopia's world, where you think if if animals were like giving themselves names, they would give themselves, you know, uh, 
better names in some cases than the humans have given them. I mean, we humans gave ourselves the name Homo sapiens. Oh, good that is. <laughs> Which means intelligent ape. Couldn't we have used a different <laughs> synonym? <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know. I guess something like, but no. Homo doesn't really didn't really have any of that connotation when it was first coined. It just means, it's just the Latin word for human, um, or no, not human. It's something else. But anyway, man. yeah, King. man, yes. I don't know. I, no, I didn't mean mean like that. I was just joking. Yeah, fair enough. Um. I, I think homo also means in a different context, same, which was yeah. where homosexual derives from, because yeah, that yeah, means yeah. same sex. Yes, yes. We also get this uh, reference here to a period of history called the Congressine, which is also a completely made up word that only links to ZTG. Uh, just implying a little, this, it's this you know, a trick in uh, making really rich feeling world building where we see there's some bit of knowledge that's a bit out of our reach makes it feel like it exists in a bigger form. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And and the only thing we can really understand from just these mentions is that uh, how the word is uh, constructed says a little bit about uh, what Falcon may seem to be implying with it. Um, I, I understand that you have an interest in words, Silver Chase. Um, <laughs> do you, did you already make up a theory as to what Congressine is supposed to mean? Because I haven't looked it up yet. Barely. I mean, I'm thinking congregate, just coming together in a group. So this would have been some period oh, of yeah. history that makes uh, sense where some some groups of animals were coming together nothing mm -hmm. specific similar, enough to say anything else probably a period of prehistory where the first mammal like social groups started to form rather than just it being like clans or um packs or, or herds or things like that but actual like social groups that that had multiple i uh, of those right I thought it's finished so i was going to ask as well if uh any of you were, would be interested to see more stuff like this but clearly i don't need to ask that we're all very thirsty for this kind of content so I'm also going to give a, give a shout out to uh, Nemo's submission for TT Tribes and Traditions, which is a page from a textbook showing prehistoric squirrels making powdered acorns. Oh, yes, that was that's also one of my favorites in, in memory. Um, another I've already given commendations to that before, but I'm going to give commendations again. Um, that blew my I own submission for tribes and traditions out of the water um and i i i really really enjoyed it um it it i i i think it really made that theme all the while especially since that was a theme that i had suggested well then let's turn this into an opportunity to show for yourself what was the thing you made for that tt I think that there's a cap out there somewhere, but I don't have it anymore. Let me get the Boober post. It was a, a green text? Uh. It was both a green text and a, uh, and a picture, but I have to get it. Hold on. Um, uh, I'm I racing you there. I'm going to, here, I've already got it. <laughs> there we go. Powerful. Um, so the story is in the text. Yeah, Badger, I, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, this is something that I had 
been inspired to draw out of the music that I was listening to. And the specific track that I got the inspiration from is in that post too, in the YouTube link. Um, I was kind of imagining a, a tribe of some mammal in, in what we would consider to be something like the, the, I uh, like Oceania, Oceania or, um, or Southeast Asia, um, kind of like uh. the universe equivalent of Indonesia or something. Um, and mm. I, I was imagining a Palm Civet tribe, I uh, that was nomadic and did raids like, like the ones depicted in that picture. And, um, and that's about it. Um, the music that that inspired me to do this is is music that's very heavily inspired by Southeast Asian folk music. Um, and uh, it it really did paint a picture in my mind, and then my uh, then my imagination eventually led me to this. Sweet. We're all just really yeah, thirsty for this highly yeah, logical, yeah. rational Didn't, look at the don't world. You want to, don't you want to show the picture in the stream? Um, yeah, we so, could. People know what, so people who listen know what Tangerine does, just described? Yeah. Um, it's a little old now. In fact, it's just over a year old. But um, it's it's one of the ones that I was more proud of when I drew it. So thankfully it's, I, uh, it holds up a little bit be uh, better than others. Um, I'd say it looks nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm more proud of the picture than the story, but if you want to read it, you certainly could. Well, I didn't schedule time for that. And it would be weird to read, uh, have a guest read their own green text or have no, a guest I be meant... on the same show. No, I sorry, I meant just like read it on your own time. Oh. That is very reasonable. <laughs> we have talked all the juice out of this story. Uh I guess probably I'm not gonna get an answer for this, but anything else you wanna say before we move on about this uh story? Uh, I think I'm good. Yeah, I, I've i sung all my praises. Yes, Ditto. It was really great, and I'm, I'm really going to check out the other parts because of this, because this really was a good appetizer for the whole concept of getting these kind of historical, uh, visual uh, expand, expansions on the Zootopia evolution all right then we have obviously very definitely uh, consumed and digested plenty of green text for this segment so it'll be time for a break now audience if you're listening you better be listening we're going to take a break now and that means it's time to ask us questions we're not calling this fresh hair this time we're calling it <laughs> for this show at least the anon bun question run i guess i will drop the call now to get that post written up and then maybe also present some bonus material i didn't have i didn't exactly feel like making you suffer through that is a much better name than fresh hair what an awful name fresh hair is <laughs> i'm glad you agree I'll see you all in 15 to 20 minutes. Cool, this you. is my comic is going back. Yeah. That time I told the world who I am. Listen up, yo. Uh. Now who's the man who stands in front of you today? The man who's come to be known as the monolithic A. Rival. The man who made the beat for me to play. Rival. The man who's simply intense to say. Rival. I never say idle, but I can get wild when it comes to representing this dub T style. Rolling with a fatty electro retro exo. Skeletal team from the get-go. The A never lets go. When I grab it, I works the magic with skill, so we elaborate. I don't 
if I get to pass it, so J Drive can have it. But for right now, it's a solo habit. You know I don't give a fuck about the chorus. Yo, I break it down way more than a four Taurus. So don't ignore us, we're gonna get in your way. The music on this planet fell into a disarray. We're gonna kick it for you, cause I think that I'm okay. Let me introduce y'all to the A. Chainsaws, my teeth are almost as twisted as my thoughts, and my thoughts come more twist than an episode of Lost. I turn them into beats, and then I kick a verse, and now I got a track to make it jump until it hurts. I'm all about wave theory, all day, all skill, all kill, all work, all play. I'm from another planet, but you already know, cause I got an 8-bit slash alien flow. We love to rock them synths down to the ground, the back up to the sky to get the Roswell sound. I get into the game to make the skillions complete. The way of us, the funkiness, there's no way to compete. I didn't come out here for nothing. It's time to break it down. So listen up. On the cut, what? Uh. Con, hot, dizzy, and tired. I beat up old, lonely mercenary, feel higher. But today, running and gunning just isn't the way. Hard to make a good living when crime doesn't pay. Sold my last two guns for six measly pistols. Hit up the local bar so I can get me some refrescos. Cerveza, por favor, I say to the tender. Hand them all the money that I had when I entered. I take a drink and lament about being poor when I notice a sign right beside the door. Necesitamos más música aquí. The bar needs a musician, as I can plainly see. Usually, I kill muchachos for a fee, but today I'm fatty hurting for the cash money. I can't play the guitar, but I can play the synth keys. I think it's time for cybernetic mariachi. <laughs> To the pawn shop later that day Sold my chainsaw and picked up LSDJ I also grabbed the Game Boy that I stole from some guy And the twin Famicom that I had since I was five I kicked the bar door open, it goes silent A couple gringos look like they're about to get violent The tender says, yeah, yeah, so I look them straight in the eye I'm your guy, and then I play And then I play So high I blow a fuse Just then a dark figure man appears 
appears in the back Points a pistol right at my nutsack Just when my heart really begins to throb He tells me that I got the job Cybernetic Matt Yatch
When me and my crew kicks, we dig and exciting like new flicks. We move the gas, moving like broomsticks. They said the show's hot, and I guess the shoe fits. Ain't nobody but the stuff at the same, but me say, Tell me ridiculous when I get into this. Microphone, physicist, get ready, cause this is it. Nuclear ride, proliferator, life obliterator. I buy reciprocators, I'm the major maker, you're just an imitator. I'm physical and practical defense. Move way too quick for your reflex. Your body gets ignited like one of the phoenix. Life is out of reach of your arms like T-Rex. My style is cretaceous, bitches don't say shit. Criticism is baseless, uh huh. The rap game is suffering from prior stasis. So when the bass hits, who tells who's hate? We'll find yourself in the hospital. We rock it all from night best. Put it past back up to my hometown. We'll never be slowing down. The sounds got you bobbing and weaving like punch out. Best believe that we ain't leaving till after the sun's out. No doubt. Clinically proven to get you moving on stage. I've been bringing the pain like how broken. Rocking with no illusion. We cause circus confusion. No stopping the revolution. And we're doing it. Would you look at the time? Let's get to those questions. The Anon Bond Question Run, where we answer your questions live. Uh, but first, before we get back to our guests, it's time to put on some public domain music. Because I'm fancy. That's all he's got back. I'm back. Did you miss me? I I didn't know what I was gonna do without you, Silver Chase. <laughs> I'm glad I'm so needed. Uh, no surprise that on a weird time on Sunday we won't get too many questions, but I think uh, one of these questions we can spend a lot of time on. Are you ready for questions? As ready as I'll ever be. Great. Uh, what are we going with first? What are your hopes for Zootopia Plus? Uh, who's going to start? I guess it's just going to be whoever answers first then, yeah. Um, my hopes for Zootopia Plus are that it's worthwhile enough for me to pirate it. A very pragmatic <laughs> hope. I, good one. Um, I have no reason to subscribe to Disney Plus, and I still won't when Zootopia Plus is around. Um, so I'm not going to subscribe to it in any case. Um, but 
I hope that Zootopia Plus is worth our time enough that I can be bothered to watch it. That's all I really hope for. All right, main Rob. Uh, uh, all right. I mean, personally, I hope we get to see some more of the world that we didn't really get to see and, you know, see some more interesting characters. But from the early stuff that's gotten out, I, I was a little disappointed. Well, I was excited that there's something new Zootopia wise coming out at all. Like anything, really. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah. The, Eddie here saying. Zootopia Plus is probably going to be like 35 minutes total. <laughs> hope it's longer than that, but who knows. Um, but they did mention that to be something on Flash and Fru-Fru, which... I don't know. I don't think anyone here is, is really uh, itching for that, you know? Like, if they said it was going to be... I don't know. Like, like something I'm interested in would be, like, um, more about Nick's childhood, or heck, like a, a Gideon Redemption episode, or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck, give me uh, Gary and Larry. <laughs> the, um, I, I don't think the the sloth characters really resonated very much with the community. Um, they, at least, they were great for the joke they performed, but not really as characters. No, they were... Their characters made for a single gag, and they don't really work for anything else, unfortunately. <laughs> Yes, that was that was my feelings too, about Flash and the entire uh, DMV joke. That it it seems like that there are a lot of boomers in the uh, team that is deciding what is promotion and merchandise worthy material from Zootopia and. They are just oh DMV yes lots that's funny that that's what people want and make a flash uh, mug like uh, uh, I don't know how many people bought a mug because flash that slot was on it. Hello? Yeah, I, uh, I mean. There were flash yeah. mugs, but yeah. I think if you were to so, pick, if you were to ask, like, uh, all right. I think if you were to ask the community, like, what named characters they would least like to see an episode about, I feel like Flash and Fru Fru would probably be at the top of the list. I, yeah, so, so I exactly. Feel like there's there's a, weird that mix. was my feeling too, <laughs> because I can just see that. Let's let's get the facts out of the way. What we read the the post that we got said that the series will mainly follow three uh, sets of stories, and the three stories will have each a uh, side character in the center: one a tiger dancer or the multiple tiger dancers, one slot, one uh, flash the slot, and one fru fru. Now. I don't care about any of these three characters, honestly. The tiger dancers are just tiger dancers. They are there to be fun to be looked at next to Gazelle. The Fufru was there for plot convenience to save Judy's and Nick's ass from her father. Yeah. And Flash was there for a joke. In the um well, so was Mr. Big. He was just there to throw in a in a Godfather reference. Um, and I think just going by the fact that almost no fanfics I've read even touch Mr. Big at all because of the implications that makes uh, that he's not a very popular character with the fandom either. Neither is Fru-Fru. Actually, I, I read some fanfics with Mr. Big, but sometimes darker ones. Like yeah. that that don't don't stray away from uh, getting in the mob connection that Judy has to choose between her career and actually uh, doing something uh, against the big family and their influence or their more uh, illegal, illegal actions. 
activities. And the thing stuff is... Stuff worse than ice. What? Stuff worse than ice. I don't think I read that. Because oh. Mr. Big is icing them in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got my, the title, I just didn't uh, click that first that it's a uh, fanfiction name. Fan oh, fiction okay. title. oh, that's the name. Okay, I didn't catch that either. Uh, myself. I don't really feel that strongly about the show. It'll happen. I think strategically this is just a really safe move because it's probably easier to uh, get this green lit by execs. Yeah. Or something a lot, a lot more minor than a full-on new movie. I guess my only hope would be uh, to avoid trampling on any well-established, important continuity. Because what you don't want is you know, a badly written, I don't know, a wild hops chapter mm -hmm. uh, ruining the entire thing. And then you get From that really what? silly thing that goes on in some fandoms where it's like, like we talk about which canon we're adhering to, because some people like one and some people like the other. Uh, From what we know so far, uh, Judy and Nick will make absolutely no appearance in this. So I think that that's the entire point. Is this series when series was greenlit because it takes no risks uh, about the entire city world building and the uh, uh, main storyline yeah so that... probably probably it will it will be a bunch of five to ten minutes or 20 minutes top uh, little fun sketches it will make fun of Fru Fru being saved because uh, she is uh, a, a more boss's father and she needs protection Probably the big polar bears will polar, polar bears will uh, stumble across the city trying to protect this tiny lady. What I expect from Flash, the entire thing will be just jokes about him being slow and annoying and everyone else around him because I, of his slowness. I'm oh. I'm most cautious about that one because. I feel like if they just play up the jokes about him being slow, it's going to wear out its welcome before it's even going, and it's just going to be painful. Yeah. It's really interesting because in older cartoons, it was very well established to redo the same thing, like uh, the Coyote and Roadrunner. It's the same thing every single cartoon, and yet you watch because it's puts each time uh, some interesting twist like the coyote comes up with a new contraption to get around the problem mm -hmm. to try again but he, he falls the same way down uh, the cliff he runs into the painted tunnel on the yeah. cliff wall it... yeah, um, same for a comic like Tom and Jerry yes wasn't yes. Tom and Jerry a really popular cartoon in Eastern Europe he, he, yes. I'm not implying yes. that Hungary is Eastern Europe, but you're pretty close to it. <laughs> uh, I guess it, it qualifies as Eastern Europe. Mm. I, I would more see it as Central Europe, I guess, unless you would uh, disagree with that. But that's that's neither here nor there. Um. Yeah, I. It's, it's something that I feel like could go wrong very easily and knowing disney it probably will but um the main idea for this is probably just to test the waters to see how much enthusiasm there still is for zootopia before they make the decision to make a full-on movie i think it's maybe on a small attempt to popularize uh, these le uh, le uh, less favorite characters, because right now in Japan, put Judy and Nick on anything and it sells because it has a huge fandom. But these characters, Flash, Fufru, even 
even Gideon and every, basically every secondary character from Bogo from Ka to Klauhauser, nobody is interested in buying stuff with their faces. <laughs> Especially so... Gideon. <laughs> Poor Gideon. Poor Gideon, yeah. <clears throat> so, what I'm thinking is this this is only to somehow give these characters a little spotlight so people especially children have time to get attached to them and, what and a care terrible about way them to a little do bit, so. maybe so they would want so they wouldn't be weirded out why, why is that buffalo plush wearing a cop uniform what is this from it feels like a weird safety play to me, to be honest. I, I feel like they probably should have dug more into, like, of the side characters, what the fans like. Especially, like, the majority of their theater-going audience. Um, yeah. It, it just uh, seems like my weird nep choices. My nephew watched Zootopia, and she said that her favorite character was Klauhauser. Hmm. Yeah, he's got some fans out there. I know a lot of people like him. But he's, you know who people funny. really like. They like the rabbit and the fox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I just it's just I, baffling I think we... to me that sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, no, go ahead. It's just baffling to me that the safe move that they're making is the one with characters nobody likes. I, it's more baffling to me that the safe move comes nearly five years after the release of the movie. This should have yeah. been a one-year plan or two-year plan immediately. And then I would understand, but this is like wasting a lot of time. People, well, so most children yeah. uh, most children no longer are interested in the movie after four years. After five years, no longer interested in the movie. So how do you, how do you want them to sit down and watch a series about that in a service that you, their parents have to buy, and their parents won't buy the service if they don't care about the movie. Yeah, and I guess the mouse is a big enough company that you'll simultaneously have the the um, well managed and well thought out divisions like the one in charge of the Marvel movies that actually know how to carry things out effectively and play the long game. And I like to think you... that too until the Star Wars series. Mm -hmm. I was just about to mention Star Wars as the polar opposite of that. The <laughs> the studio yeah. that put no long term planning into their their uh, series, um, and really only started to get their act together once they moved away from those movies. Um, and also cancelled every single side movie besides two because they were failures. Yeah, right. they were trying to squeeze maximum money out of it as quick as possible. They were making like a Boba Fett movie initially, but then I guess they scrapped that and remade it into The Mandalorian. Mm. Which is um, kind of something I kind of was interested in a Boba Fett movie. Well, they scrapped it because I because Solo, a Star Wars story... But nobody was interested in a Solo yes. origin story. Yeah. Especially one that was reshot uh, late into development. Um, yeah, that, that whole ordeal was very messy, and I don't think Disney's actually going to learn very many lessons from it. Uh, they're, go they're a stubborn company the same way Sony is where they can just make I uh, horrible failures and then not learn anything from it and do them again. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe they maybe they won't, maybe they will. I kind of made a calculation that uh, with they bought the rights to the Star Wars movies for four billion dollars. In today's money that's four and a half with counting inflation. With the budgets of each Star Wars movie and their box office money, they are uh, they have a budget of around 
six billion or something, and their box office, they're their only five. So they they are in a one billion dollar minus just based on these three movies. And these three movies should have been able to get that money back. If not from not for merchandising, they Disney would be in a one billion dollar minus right now on the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, I even though they were successes in the box office, it's most likely that Disney is slightly in the red with the, the franchise overall. We really oh, love to talk about Zootopia Plus, don't we? I, <laughs> I'm, I'm very willing to talk about how I'm not very enthusiastic about it, yes. Uh, I think I think we have this it enough. Let's try to talk about how it could be good. Uh, I'm trying to, <laughs> I try to come up with something that could praise it, like Main said that uh, expand the city's lore and uh... yeah. I mean, I, I do have, I have one thing I'm hoping for with the Tiger Dancers thing. Like, they apparently put a lot into developing the whole um, the Palm Hotel setting and that's why they, you know, kind of did a long, long pause on it when they were going by it um, in the train in the opening scene. It'd be cool to see more of like Sahara Square and the hotel, and and maybe do something with that with the the Tiger episode. But I don't know. We'll see what they come up with in two years. <laughs> I feel savings because like the... it's it's all already made. Reuse it. Yeah. yeah reuse I... it exactly. I feel like the bottom line is that even if it's bad content, it will still be world building content. And if it's bad content, we can make it good. That's a good point. Yeah. We yeah. the ZT the Zootopia fandom has been pretty good at salvaging at least a little bit of even the bad stuff and try to come up with something that kind of Makes it better. Yeah. yeah. Like Violet was peeled out of one of the comics. What? And I. Uh, Violet, the character, came from a comic. Yeah. She's a soft canon character because she only appears in the comic. <clears throat> um, what else? Oh, we, I. The fandom certainly got a lot of mileage out of Jack Savage. Oh yeah, Jack, yeah. Jack Savage guy, yeah, and Violet. <laughs> yes. And now the yeah. most Maybe important. Maybe we will get some interesting new side characters thanks to it. Mm. Yeah. Like uh, there was the boss of Flash in the comic that Raccoon Girl Camellia was her name. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, her yeah. We we could get more contact with uh, contents uh, <clears throat> content with her. Yes. All right. Silver. Yeah. Moving go on. Ahead. A critical question that must be asked: Which came first, ranch or cool ranch? <laughs> The important questions. Well, this is an interesting uh, question to ask. Um, I feel like there had to have been a point where the definition of what makes Cool Ranch was not defined yet. And it was only when you could compare what we now know to be Cool Ranch to regular Ranch that such a distinction could have been made. So I think at first it was only Ranch. And then, when what we now know as Cool Ranch came along, it was then that you could distinguish between Ranch and Cool Ranch. Um, however, whether or not that first Ranch was Cool Ranch, you may never know. That was exactly going to be my take on this. You can only have a cool ranch once there's already a different ranch to compare to. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, then yep. we answer this question correctly. We can move on. Is it true? Exactly. <laughs> is it true that tubes are the lewdest mammals? <laughs> oh my god. Um, yeah, sure. This science. <laughs> We have two biologists in this uh, stream here. <laughs> Let's. I'm going to ask Aka. Uh, is it true that tubes are the lewdest mammals? <laughs> you should ask Otterly. He's the one. Uh, this uh, this definitely... bar for everyone else. It, Otterly uh, is extremely I'm... is an extremely sexual being. But are all <laughs> tubes? Aka says this is true, yes. So we have an expert's opinion on this. Yeah, this definitely is extremely generalized because artsy with tubes. Are badgers this, tubes? This definitely begs for a professional opinion because I unfortunately don't know much about this. Tibbets are honorary tubes, even if they're not technically biologically <laughs> useless. <laughs> All right, but bunnies are definitely a close, close second. That is true. They are very lewd as well. As exhibited by their uh, constantly moving population sign, soon to cause um, issues in food supply, I'm sure. <laughs> I remember reading it in Guardian Blue, uh, one of my favorite fanfics, long-term fanfics, that is, that... In one of the chapters, Judy explains to Nick that that sign is just a gag for tourists and that doesn't actually represent the, the actual population and that only certain numbers in the signpost actually move and then they just flip back to the original number once they uh, count up all the way. Ah, yes, playing <laughs> to the stereotype. It's like yes. that town in uh, Australia called Speed. Mm-hmm. Beside the welcome to speed sign is a sign that says, please slow down. Yeah, that's, <laughs> nice. that's a good one. I also like the idea that it's just a gag. There is a lot of places, a lot of tourist destinations in Maine that really play up the zany Maine pronunciation of things, which I find kind of cringe inducing, but it, it, it seems to please the tourists well enough so you'll see signs saying lobster and mana and all that and it's it's just terrible but i guess the tourists like it you know last time i was at a train station there was a big rack full of uh travel magazines i should have picked up one from maine should have learned more mm. you'll learn that more than half of the land mass is owned by logging companies. It's a completely unpopulated forested area. Um, one of the last areas in this part of North America that's at, that actually has old growth forest, like actual untouched by uh, frontier land. Along with some parts of I, uh, Adirondack Park in New York. Yeah. So it is distinctly true. Tubes are the lewdest mammals. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I can't really think of any other I uh, thing to counter that except rabbits, perhaps. All of this is kind of out of my wheelhouse, though. <laughs> so, time for a question for reflection. If you could go back in time to say something to your past self on the day that you first found yourself in this thread, what advice or warnings would you give? Uh, I'll ruminate on that a little bit. Does anyone else want to answer? This could be something that Silver Chase nope. could answer too. Yeah, yeah I've sure. told my origin story few times. TG Gecko asks, if tubes are so lewd, where are the pregnant tubes? I I think Terry got pregnant once, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hopefully I the tubes are always with the other species. <laughs> 
Exactly. Can't get pregnant from anal. That's exactly it. Unless you're autonomous. Also, uh, other species. <laughs> Unless you're you know, <laughs> But m miracles can happen, and I think in the case with Terry, it ver very much was a miracle. Um, <laughs> and and I uh, I congratulate Terry and Nemo for their their I. Uh, Miracle. This is so cursed. The miracles, yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I also heard that Terry didn't go with the cesarean section, so congratulations to him. Oh, no. But okay, actually on topic, yeah. I'm going to... Uh, we, yeah, we, haven't really, we haven't really answered any of the, uh, this question. Yes, let's what, answer the question. What, uh, what warning would I give to myself? I guess... I can go first, if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, go first. Sure. When I first discovered the thread, I lurked a lot. So I would say to my past self, stop lurking and stop lurking so much and start getting involved. Because I only got here because I started engaging with people instead of just watching things happen. And surprisingly, it's a found it to be a positive place to make hobbyist creative things. CTG is the reason why I've, I've been writing and drawing when I haven't done that in any capacity outside of school prior to that. That is very yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's kind of my take on it, too. Um, I didn't really start getting involved in content creation until 2018, I'd say. But I didn't start doing it regularly until a year later. And I've been here since 2015. I didn't really have any excuse for not doing it sooner. I... Well, if I were... You haven't... But ZTG exists before the movie was released? Yeah, well, not really, but there were Zootopia threads on Co as far back as 2015, and I was uh, working in those. Um, oh, I did not and know that. There were... There was content creation back then, too, although to a very limited capacity. Um, I, I remember Moped talking to me about how he had drawn things for the threads on a few instances in like December of 2015 um, and by that metric unless anybody else wants to challenge that uh, this claim he's probably the first content creator for the thread um, some of the Just earliest ones would also be um, for I uh, chumpy. Um, uh, oh god. Um, it's so far back that I'm forgetting names now, but um, Weaver only appeared in like April of 2016, but there were a few in March. Um, when I when I think that far back, it's kind of hard for me to remember a lot of the names, but anyway. If I were talking to my to 2015 me, I would tell him stop hesitating to make art and stop waiting for a good opportunity to come. Also, don't put all your money into writing. You're not going to get anywhere with it. Just start drawing. Um, and I would just persuade him to the best of my ability to start drawing sooner than later because there is so so much that i missed in the heyday in 2016 and 2017 that i could have been participating in but didn't because i just sat on my ass and it's it's bet it's best that i at least did something eventually but I just think right now where I could be standing right here, right in this place, where I could have been if I 
had started drawing regularly in 2016 instead of 2019. And I probably could have made very big leaps, but I don't know. Again, hindsight is 2020 and it's best it's it's for the better that I at least did it eventually. Yeah, I was going to say uh either you were going to do it later or you're going to do it never. Mhm. Mm uh Chichi Gato, you're saying he was drawing stuff the month the movie came out. Rob, have you thought of what you're going to say? In, in just that, that better later than never. That's, yeah. uh, that's a basic saying. For me, uh, there is not really much to lament about because the question is, what would be the thing that I would warn myself about the first time I discovered the threads? And the thing is, I discovered the threads very late, way beyond the heydays. Like, okay, not too much beyond the heydays, but only a few months before the first year anniversary in 2017. Yeah, you were here in 2017. Uh, I created my Zuzona as a bet that if Zootopia wins the Oscar, I will create a Zuzona. Mm -hmm. And that was, my, that was uh, the end of my lurkings as I introduced myself as a personal artist, a uh, creator that actually starts to create stuff for the threads. But before that, I only lurked for like two months, three months, maybe. And that time was necessary for me to actually get a hang of it, how these uh, threads work, who is who, and uh, what is the chemistry of the fellow Tsetsis uh, who come here and create content uh, based on each other's influence. I needed that time to get comfy. And I feel like the, I shouldn't warn myself about it too. Don't, uh, you don't need that time. Just be comfy because you can be yourself with these guys. Uh, I don't think I would even believe myself. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, I only... ZTG is like the reason why I write and draw and stream for fun. Uh, if it wasn't for ZTG, I'd probably just be spending my free time playing games. But I'm doing fun things as well. How about yeah, you, Main? I'm feeling, feeling heavily the same. Main? <clears throat> yeah, um, and I... I got into the threads, I don't know, May or June of 2016, something like that. I lurked for quite a while, too. I think towards near the end of the year before I got into it. So, yeah, I, I wish I had been a little more active in the um, early days. Uh, as far as warning myself goes, I'd be like, you'll be here forever. I, I honestly would not have thought when I discovered the threads back in 2016 that I'd still be talking about this stuff in, like, 2020. But so it goes. I remember um, making predictions I, in 2016 that the thread would be gone by 2018. Yeah, to my <laughs> knowledge, uh, ZTG is absurdly long-lasting. Yeah, yeah. as far as 4chan generals go, it is. I mean, it is a, it is a small fraction of the activity that it used to be at. I, I remember we were getting through, like, three threads, threads a day, a day. Or so in 2016. Yeah, yeah and I think like I came in, like... Year. Yeah, I think it came in like a bit after that peak now activity. It's, now it's like uh, one thread every two to three days. Yeah, yeah. So I, I felt like even one thread a day was really fast to get through. Like, I, I always had to wake up and open up uh, the archives to see what, what, what happened the time while I was asleep. Because it was just yeah. so, so intense and so... I miss. I always made so much green text and drawings and stuff. It's kind of sad that uh, some people like I don't want to say names. This moved moved on to their own projects, but I I I, don't, I understand it. It's actually good that they still hang out with us. Like. 
they listen to this green text either even if they didn't uh, create stuff for it or they even join in and read green text so they are interested about it uh, I'm and kind of thing that really makes me happy about it that anyone can, can just reappear anytime if they want yeah. nobody left with a sore taste like uh, let's say in Tumblr there the Amoy and Ren case where they just burned every bridge with the Zootopia commun- community mm-hmm. because they just they just said Jack and uh, this not Sky character are or OCs how dare you say that they are Zootopia adaptations yeah um I, I guess it's only natural that after four or five years, people would start moving on to different things. Nothing lasts and forever. No, of course not. And yeah. it's not really something... I mean, it it is always a shame to see someone move on, but it's not really something that I find, like, completely surprising. I, I expect people to not be interested in in one thing their whole life um and especially if you're someone who has made about 1000 pictures that are tagged on the buru just for one thread at some points i feel like you can just safely rest on your laurels Yeah, I feel like we've mined out, or long since mined out, a lot of avenues related to, 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 eh, to Zootopia. So this whole thing with the um, you know prehistory of the mice is like an interesting angle that I hadn't seen really uh, worked at so much in the past. But I mean, if you're yeah. talking about like a Nick and Judy type story, like there's been just about every variation you can imagine has been done in, in some degree or another. So it's yeah, it's a, a lot of it's tapped out, and I can understand why people moved on, you know? Yeah. But... Until something new comes out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people will come back once the shorts appear, if only just temporarily, but mm. still, it'd be nice to see old faces again. I won't hold my breath very much until the, until a sequel <laughs> is announced. That is what will drum up most of the enthusiasm for a movie again. I think. Yeah. If they do a sequel. My impression of uh, ZTG's absurd longevity uh, has to do with the persistent creative community around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are uh, not very... That it's it's a very dense in original content thread. Yeah. I, I feel like especially, it's especially thanks to dedicated people that uh, organize stuff like you and Smug, like the 5 by 5s that he regularly posts for every TT, TT mm-hmm. for always making the poll and uh, making the archives and uh, uh, managing the docs. It's green for managing uh, the bureau. Mm-hmm. I think all, all of this together is holding the community, community together and giving everyone the possibility to jump in any time. When yeah. they feel like they to create, I I wish I could create more for the threads. There are there were a bunch of TTs that just flew by because um, Tuesday in, in this year, um, because everyone worked from home because of the pandemic, uh, simply had so much rearrangement in the time frame that I had to work in I have to be I had to be available and Tuesday was the day that we have given down versions of the program that we worked on that was the day that we g- g- gave out the releases and we had to be always working on smaller errors and stuff yeah it, it feels <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, that that was basically that uh, I 
I guess I kind of uh, missed out on a lot of TTs that interested me, mm-hmm. <laughs> and kind of, I have a lot of build-up inspiration, and not just from the movie, but from other great great creators, Backstreet, uh, the Rabbit Clans folks, Blue Guardian, Guardian Blue. It all are great great creations that um, inspire fellow TCs and me and I feel like uh, I haven't been able to release that creativity that mm. that inspiration that those things g- gave me that's why I, I'm sp- uh, specifically am here because I still have uh, every day I sit down thinking okay today I may be able to draw something yeah and then time <laughs> I, I either procrastinate or or something comes up and stops me from working well um if i could say one thing i to as i for some solace um it's that there is never an actual strict deadline for any thematic thursday so if you want to go <laughs> back and make one if you have an idea for one i all of a sudden you can go back and do that and that's exactly what i'm gonna do for the dreams and nightmares tt because i have an idea for it now not man i mean uh that that evening dawn story was for the post-apocalypse tt so when i finish it it'll be a very belated uh (laughs) submission for that yeah um I actually was in the process of making a submission for Dreams and Nightmares, but then that became a that was aborted after the first page. Um, it turns out oh. that I'm not very good at making comic strips, but um, I threw out that idea because I just didn't know how to wrap it up very well. But in a moment of serendipity, I came up with a much better idea about a month ago, and once I have time for it, I'm gonna. I, I really want to flesh it out. Nice. And again, that's the beauty of TT. You can go back and do it over again whenever you want. Which is a great thing, yeah. No. Does. But does. The, only, the only, only problem. Uh, that I have with that is that when the ideas build up then sometimes you sit down and think okay which one should I draw mm, yeah. and and you waste like 10 times uh, 10, 10 minutes think, uh, trying to decide which one you should draw and you start drawing it and you ch- no, and you start drawing it and you change your mind and yeah. you rather erase it and start over with another idea it's kind of hard to yeah, just... to stay focused on one idea when you already have like 20 TTs that <laughs> you missed and want to go back on. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Agreed. Decision paralysis or whatever. All right. Uh, moving on. I need to cough. <laughs> Uh, does anyone have cold takes to share on the last green text theater we were talking about hot takes um i uh, i really like black metal i'm not that that a, i'm not a cold take it's things you like that, or instead of things um, you uh i I, I assume it's just milk toast ta- i opinions in general so so, what are hot takes? Uh, I'm not a native English speaker. Uh, that's some hot internet lingo that means... Um, <laughs> it, it means a controversial opinion, basically. Like someone saying that uh, pineapple pizza is great. It's... it's uh, Yeah, basically. It means a controversial opinion or, like, a hard-line stance on something. Okay, so, like, a cold opinion is, like... Keanu Reeves is breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a hot take would be like Gideon's best character or something would be would be like a hot take, I guess. Um, yeah, if you're like, or 
Or you would say Zootopia was never good. Oh yeah, that's a spicy one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My cold take is that water is the best way to hydrate yourself. I I don't know. Um I I uh, I don't think I agree with you there, Silver Chase. We must discuss the quality that of water too, like hot water is the best way to hydrate yourself or cold water is the best way to hydrate yourself. Also, we must talk about high, high, uh, HP or whenever it's salt water. Salt water is definitely not a good way to hydrate yourself. <laughs> I heard I heard somewhere on the internet, I don't remember where it was, but some like medical blog or something was talking about how tubes can actually survive entirely on bodily fluids. Did you hear about this? <laughs> Yeah, Source it's really from our tubologist. <laughs> Made any cold takes? Uh, shit. I ran out of them. There are no cold uh, takes. A cold take would be like, like wild hops is the the best or whatever, something like that. It'd be like a, the opposite of a hot take. These, these are very cold takes. I like it. <laughs> Chili. Next, how has the death stream been for you so far? So I'll answer that because I've been on it the entire time. I've been streaming for 19 hours nonstop. Uh, this green tax year has been going on for over three hours now. Uh, Maind and Rob, you've also been here intermittently. Yep. Yeah, I, I was a... I was one of the first to peace out uh, last night, but I did sculpt for a while, and that was nice. I hung out afterwards. I only missed a few hours. I was up till uh, 6 in the morning, then got a quick shot eye till 9, and then get, got back in. And you all woke up early just to be on this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I normally wake up early anyway because I, I I have a job that makes me wake up at five in the morning or six if I want. Um, but I was up past two a.m. this night because I I was suddenly compelled to draw a request that nobody really asked for and. Um, and I couldn't go to sleep until I finished it. So I did. Um, and it was in the middle of Silver Chase's torrent of uh, of 5x5s. Five five Had to do something all night. Uh, here's the question that we've all been itching to answer. What are your thoughts on adding green texts to the Buru? I don't know. I'll speak as the administrator of the Guru. Uh, when it comes to policy questions like this, I usually find myself asking them or forwarding them to Nemo because um, I, I have kind of confided in him as his uh, as as my um, like advisor on a lot of guru policy because i feel like my judgment is not always correct or i just am too uncertain about things to i uh, to make that decision that call on my own however most of the time um he seems to often try and express to me that he feels that I should really be more proactive on my own, uh, I, uh, you know, on my own, and that I should not have to rely on someone else so often to make decisions. And I respect that, so I guess that's what I'll be doing here. Um, I, uh, I think that if we are to 
present the Buru as a repository for all thread content um, written or I uh, or drawn since we have been archiving written content now alongside pictures then I guess it would only make sense to try and make an archive for the very disorganized and and very far-reaching um, history of, of green texts um, However, because we've been neglecting to do that for so long, there would be very much work to do. Um, lots of trudging through, um, you know, people's own personal archives and having them pull stuff up for us and then transferring that onto the Buru. I have a, f a couple people in mind who would be able to get a lot of that for us. But I just kind of fear that throwing it all in on there at once would kind of clutter things. But unfortunately, there's not really a bet any, any better way to do that with the bare bones system that the Buru is. Um, also, as one of you brought up too, there's not really any way to filter between pictures and green texts. And if someone doesn't want to see green texts, especially if they all got dumped in on the Buru at once, they might not want to to see just that. Well, no, um, it's actually possible. it's actually um, entirely possible. Uh, yeah. We we just use a tag called green text, and if someone doesn't want to, uh, uh, this the Buru uses the same uh, of kind of ad admin surface that mm. if he registers a user and he can set the user setting uh, bla uh, blacklist tag my uh, it will automatically minus search uh, green texts yeah i guess that makes sense i guess i didn't really think right. about that my suggestion was going to be making a separate guru for green texts alone but i guess this mm. is a more straightforward answer well, that's my attitude. Uh, 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 green text shouldn't be going onto the Buru, because that's for pictures. And mm. uh, I think archiving pictures of text is a bit silly, because we have the text. Uh, and yeah, when, you have, when you have an archive of text and it's tagged, it's a blog. But, and... it's, kind of, but it's kind of a unique thing in the ZTG and overall in Fortune General that yeah. These are captures. These are mm -hmm. green text captures. And yeah. the good thing is that it's simpler to repost them. Because yeah. that way, if you want to reshow, as you have here, you have uh, posted us pictures of these green texts during the, the G GTT. These, this is the kind of importance of these pictures. Mm -hmm. And... Um... Yeah. 4chan is a site where the content stored on it is always temporary. That's the um that's kind of the whole point about it and the only place where that content can be semi-permanent is on archives like these or archives like Desu archive um and unfortunately as I've learned from spending enough time on 4chan 4chan archives are not very permanent even the longer longer lasting ones usually bite the dust eventually um yeah. and i i'm just not sure if we can really put much trust into that content being around for very long because digital archiving is actually kind of a serious topic because people don't really take it very seriously a lot of the time um there is that assumption that that data is always going to be there but we've learned time and time again that's not very true um and we it unfortunately we have to work more towards finding a more permanent uh, solution to that if we can um and also Having it in some repository like that would just make it a whole lot easier for people to find them. 
because trudging through Desu Archive to find green text is not very easy and it's not very I uh, very straightforward. So being able to find them with a tagging system would be would make that a lot easier. I think it's I a agree. limitation of uh, manpower of either creating a solution or maintaining it. And mm. yeah. I dedicate <laughs> already a lot of time to the threads and it's uh all of it is is really fighting attrition unfortunately uh, yeah yeah I in any case jump... we have to deal with the technical debt that we do starting pretty late in the history of the thread yeah i mean i don't think we should necessarily need to like go crazy going back to grab the old stuff but yeah, at least, at least only going the best. Forward. Yeah, only at least the best stuff. Like I have uh, at least a uh, thirty or forty green text saved in a folder of mine. If yeah. we decided, okay, here's the buru. If you want a green text, save it with these with this specific tag called green text, and uh, whatever you can name about this specific story, like. Its genre, its characters. It, when if if it's what made for a TT, mark the TT. Yeah, I I think it is a valuable option that if pe I have uploaded under the bureau before, and I think other CCs have done it before. If you have something that you want to store because you feel like it's worth storing, don't be afraid to store it. I think that's the importance, and I feel like there are some green texts that I would like to preserve for future reference. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I guess I'd say, like, there's also something to be said for the format itself. Like, it's it's not just the green text. Like, part of it really is, like, the pictures that were posted along with it, and uh, the formatting. You just scrape it as text. You kind of lose something of the yeah, original green text. That, that too. That too. Green text is green text because it's green. That's uh, one thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, that's... If we just make a website that has a similar formatting. That's one part of it, but I've also observed that green texts have a very specific meter and prose to them as well. Um, and that is also something that makes them pretty special in my mind, is that you often can't really replicate the exact same feeling of a green text if it was just written in regular text or in, you know, the way that a book would, because yeah. it's it's almost like freeform poetry in a sense, but not exactly because there is still a certain je ne sais pas quoi to it that I uh, <laughs> that is um that still makes it distinct from just being that okay yeah I, I agree now which non pack street character are you horniest for Nick and Judy excluded because that's too easy um, I'm not really horny for any characters, to be honest. I'm asexual. Uh. Hmm. I guess for me, I gotta, I gotta go with the uh, barrier, Larry. I think. Big or actually, wolves. no, no, no. I take that back. I, I go for, I think I go for Sky, because it'd be tough to. I, I just go for Sky. My, uh... What a coincidence! I wanted to say Sky too. Yeah, when you brought Sky up, I think that's what I'd pick after if Judy and Nick are out. I don't really feel that strongly for any of the characters like that, but Sky is a patoot. <laughs> yeah, she Sky is. is cute. I'll but, admit that much. May right. Maybe that's that maybe that's not a valid answer since. Uh, Sky is kind of like a semi OC. She is a dropped character that we, the community, salvaged and uh, recreated into a new character. May if if the question only uh, applies to actual characters that appeared in the movie, then what would be your answer? Uh, 
Well, I guess I'd have to fall back to uh, Gary and Larry then. Big wolves. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure. Uh, I don't know what I'd pick if we stick strictly to the movie. Don't think uh, of them. It... Don't think of any of the characters hornily like that. <laughs> yeah, me neither. The, uh, many of the characters are very uh, cute, like Mrs. Otterton is a lovely wife, and uh, it's so great to see her with Mr. Otterton. Mr. Otterton. But uh, hmm, for which one interests me as a potential partner, I can't really name name any. I'm trying. Not even to, uh, Nick and Judy. I know they were excluded for this purposes of this question, but <laughs> even Nick, even if they wouldn't be excluded, I wouldn't be because I fair. I ship them with each other. I'm I don't ship them with myself. <laughs> fair, fair enough, and that's understandable too. I think they make a good pair. Yeah. So, which one? Yeah, Nick and Judy I mean... were not made for anybody else but themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were, Judy and Nick were created for each other. <laughs> uh. All right. Now, is there any trend in the Zootopia fandom that you liked, and any trend that you disliked? Uh. Now, when I say what I say, I'm not going to try and blame anybody in particular, just the trends themselves, but back in 2016, there was a trend for something that excuse me that was kind of based off of the Night Howlers called Pastor um, uh. and what this was was a sort of like tranquilizing drug in I uh, made up by a community member that was supposed to just kind of make a mammal docile and kind of thoughtless almost and and very relaxed kind of like a, a you know grazing mammal or something um and then as you can probably imagine it devolved almost immediately into a date rape drug um, and that's where it kind of lost me. I <laughs> and I and I think there must have been a similar sentiment in the community at large because it didn't last all that long. Um, and again, no offense to anybody in particular, but that's probably for the better considering where it was going. Uh, if you got lines up with you, yeah, I completely agree too. Yeah, it got pretty dark. Kind of moved out of the sort of thing that I'm normally into. <laughs> Turns of friends I disliked. Uh, I don't know. I, I go through a lot of bad fanfics <laughs> for fun. Yeah. Uh, I used to do that too back when um, yet another right anon would would always post um, uh, updates about the fix that he was I uh, perusing through on on ff.net or AO3, and he got he came across a lot of interesting stuff. I'd say maybe the it's not really a trend; it's a trope, I guess, of Judy's parents being inexplicably hostile towards Nick. That for seems no, to happen a lot. For no real reason. I mean, if there's... They can hate Nick if there's a good story established reason to do that. Yeah, but otherwise, they are working together with Gideon. Why would they be afraid of Nick, who hasn't attacked their daughter? Because there has to be drama in the story somehow. Yeah, actually, no. That that's going to be my the the trend I dislike is 
uh, drama out of nowhere, which uh, Nick's, uh, Judy's parents not liking Nick for some reason is. Yeah, again, even though it was established in the movie itself that they had found a way to trust Foxes more. Uh, yeah. If I have... Uh, the thing is that there is one thing I really dislike right now in, in 2019 and 2020 that uh, grow to rise, but it's not really a Zootopia fandom thing, it's more like a furry thing, that these cuck comics, <laughs> you know, these really weird... Uh, it's just not a healthy fetish, I think. I don't think it's a healthy fetish. No, oh, and... Is. I, I often get the impression that a lot of the time people draw or commission cuck comics as a sort of, like, vengeful act towards someone that they don't like. Um, not even, like, towards any one person in particular, but just a certain group of people that the the creator or the uh, the author just does not agree with um and it, it's a it often comes off as that it's like very spiteful <laughs> and uh, again not very healthy I, I have never made art out of spite so i i can't really yeah me neither, me neither. if it doesn't do yeah, me neither. If it doesn't cause you happiness, why would you draw it? Because if it causes you malicious happiness, that's that's a sign. That's a mental illness. That you are a sadist if you mm -hmm. are happy for causing someone else pain. No. Yes. Uh, the thing is that uh, main you you were laughing about something. Oh, uh, well, part of it was just somewhere in the in the chat. Uh... Hi. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess trends I dislike. Hopefully, no one feels I'm calling them out specifically. Although I guess it was only a couple of people that were mainly into this. Although it was become a thread thing. Was like the whole um, you know, Mr. Wild is a uh, into incest thing. I kind of, yeah. I don't know. I never really liked that, and then it really became the only thing you see with her, like. I mean, some people did attempt to write stories about Nick's past and his, her mother's uh, or his mother's struggles uh, raising him as a single parent and all that. But also, what we saw was just like, you know, yeah, I really, I really think that these are just really furry things and not really uh, a trend inside the Zootopia fandom. Like, someone really likes uh, these cheating comics, and it comes across. The Zootopia fandom and makes a Zootopia cheating comic. That's not really a Zootopia fandom trope. Um, it it really is just the thing that Zootopia is still a little bit relevant. People are interested in it and they adopt their own ideas and fetishes into the this fandom. But let's say inside the fandom, who are already established, uh, a trope that or that was really uh, the, the really disliked. I can't really come up with uh, something that may, maybe uh, the blue blue. You know, uh, we have came up with this term a blue blue, and <laughs> it really was uh, popularized by uh, not really by Meat's work because Meat's work uh, uh, the Judy's that I was kind of a, on a blue blue fanfic but it was actually good no well uh, yeah overall I, I think it was interesting it i was thought okay. it was i thought it was more good than than otherwise but i feel like i i once watched an interview with him where he also agreed that the way that he handled it could have been a little bit better because the ending just I don't think it really reached a satisfactory conclusion and um, that's unfortunately something that happens a lot with, with that kind of content where there isn't really a a long term plan with it so 
sometimes a conclusion just sort of gets dropped into the audience's lap. Yeah, um, it's like utopia. It's a very dark setting, and it's really hard to come out of it in in a happy ending. Yeah, it's the, if the setting itself is so dark, and uh, it it uh, starts with actual unhappiness and uh, pain, loss. It's hard to recover. It's hard to tell an interesting story that makes you want to go through and uh, feel like you regained the thing that you have lost. Yeah. Yeah. And... I mean, I think you can do a dark story. It's just it has to like justify its darkness. It's not yes. like the oh, is... Nick is dead for easy sad points. You know that kind of stuff. Uh, no. Yeah. Um, those are really cheap plot plot devices and. If you kill off a character, you don't just kill them off for the sake of killing them off. You give them a justified and grounded reason for dying in the first place. Like, there are characters that die in Guardian Blue. I'm not going to say who they are, but um, there are characters that die in that, but they don't just die for the sake of... of bringing up drama in, in, in the story they actually serve a purpose in the story's progression and also not everybody isn't just sitting standing around crying and being despondent about it um <coughs> i don't really know where i'm going with this i got what you mean oh uh, um, no i got what you mean too i also want to make another note that i felt like another place where the a blue blue descriptor originated from was um the the saga with bananan and red am i am i remembering this correctly bananan and red no you i don't, don't you don't remember this maybe i wasn't I, really, uh, I, I missed most of that myself uh, yeah that was a 2016 thing but um spoilers the conclusion to that just kind of fell out of nowhere. Um, and uh, no offense to the people involved with it, but um, that I felt was kind of um, kind of just I don't know what the word for it is. Anyway, um, I'm not really making much sense with this, so I'm going to stop. Okay, I'll butt in right now to say that I'm feeling pretty damn loopy. I need to go get a drink of water. And then of course. we will probably try to finish the stream quickly or else I will go crazy. I will be yeah, back in a minute. Yeah. Go for a I was actually going to say that maybe we could wrap up this question by saying things that we were pos that we think positively about instead of just negatively while Silver Chase is gone and he's still doing the stream. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to also wrap it up that uh, I bring me bringing up a blue blue uh, and overall it's basically the same that uh, Silver Chase uh, mentioned the pointless drama. Mm -hmm. uh, a blue blue is basically pointless pointless drama. Yeah. Uh, in I... another in another word, so we basically all agreed on the same thing that th that's the thing that we least like pointless drama for like the abortion comic. I didn't want to bring it up, but. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's the worst example of. of I don't it. think anyone it, wants to bring up the abortion comic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, as for things that I think positively about, um, I would probably say, I mean, it's pretty topical since we just talked about it in the stream. But I, I am really hoping that we can continue the momentum with a more. Uh, scientific or prehistoric uh, angle on stories with the kinds of things that Falk is doing. Um, I would love to see more world building in that direction. Excuse me. Because it is not only an incredibly bountiful area to explore, but it's also one that I'm, as I've said, very interested in seeing more of. Um... There is so much potential that I can see already, and that barely even scrapes the surface of what could be done. Yeah. All right, I'm back. 
and uh, if I'm not butting into anything, I'll share what I liked. Ah, uh, sure. Which is, this is a really simple one, the really stupid forceful terminology. I think it's really silly and I love it. Mm -hmm, yeah. People are using their paws in instead of their hands. Yes. Oh, you should see oh, what, what I do in my story. I, I, I force this so much. Yeah, you yeah. really did. <laughs> I was going to say there that. Was a, uh, yeah, there yeah and a, a lot line. of animal puns too. And like uh, uh, Tangerine and Maid, you saw my draft of it. I even, mm. like one of the characters calls out the whole animal pun thing explicitly in world. I remember, uh, yeah. I remember in one of the excerpts, you also had a character saying sure is guano. Yeah. I think some people some people think this is cringe and it's bad. I think this is cringe and I love it. I think <laughs> it's tasteful cringe. I, I don't think it's cringe. Uh, it's uh, the better word word for it is. Uh, uh, I I would say corny. It's, it's it's yeah. I a little bit corny. But it's part of the what's built up the world. It's what's created Zootopia in the first place. In the movie itself. That if the movie itself established that it is the whole world is animal puns, then yeah, it's yeah. Okay if you you also embrace this aspect of it. Yeah, actually that's a very good point. The movie is chock full of corny puns. Yeah, and in universe, right? Uh like Yeah. It's in universe. Wouldn't everyone just be used to that? They wouldn't know any other way. Exactly. I think any other something... uh, trends that we liked? Um, yeah. Uh, oh, you first. Uh, I mean, there's just there's been so many like cute and comfy things. Like I, I love uh, most of the stuff that's been done with Sky. You know, has been a you know, real precious. Uh, it's nice how the it's interesting how the community has developed its own like little lingo and in jokes and all that. There's been a lot of fun stuff, you know, and running gags. The whole Terry thing with his slowly growing and increasingly unrealistic uh, dick. <laughs> sword. The sword, yeah. Okay. Um, Rob's actually. Oh. oh, by the way, uh, sorry to for to going back. Uh, mm. just TGG has uh, commented that, on his opinion, and the worst thing that the fandom is a constant comparison to B starts. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I have not ever read B stars, but the I what I do it. know of it is that it's really more like Black Sad, more like more than Zootopia. Yeah, yeah. I actually read B starts and. Uh, I actually like it uh, to a certain level, but I don't compare it with Zopia. That's like comparing uh, I don't know Harry Potter with Lord of the Rings. Which one does magic better? Or It's not, like, it's not about that. It's about the story and the characters. Yeah, it's a different setting. Um... I mean, for a while, people were saying, like, oh, Beastars is so much better, blah, blah, blah. There's so much about that. And then Beastars plot kind of started going off the rails pretty hard, in my opinion. And then I guess people stopped saying that so much. At least I noticed it less in the threads. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's absolutely uh, true right now, because Beastars has made fun of Stopia for so long that they are not uh, taking the word loading seriously, that it's not... That that easy to make predators and praise friends and beast starts are presenting it easily, and beast starts solution. I don't know if I spoil it to anyone. Can I spoil it to anyone? Anyone? Any yeah, go ahead. Questions. Sure, whatever. Beast starts solution is to predators to eat fish instead of the other prey animals. Wow. The exact same thing that they do in Zootopia from the beginning yeah. of the movie. Yeah. They needed. They needed. They they realized this option is available after the industrial revolution when Zootopia mammals have probably realized that in the cave ages. So <laughs> which so which universe is dumber? Uh, I don't know. I can't speak for that because I haven't read it. 
Um, I'm not. I am not really much of a a manga or anime fan, though, and I'm especially not a fan of shonen. So I, I um, it just didn't appeal to me very much. Right. And are we ready for the last question? One thing, uh, I, I actually didn't say what I like, uh, what trend I liked. Can we say White Hopes is a trend? Because it's not actually a canon thing. And it's not really just a trope. The thing that uh, people decided that Judy and Nick are compatible enough to be romantic interests to each other. Can be called can be called a trend. In your yeah. opinions, it's a cold uh, take. It's it's p quite possibly the safest of them all, though, because they're the two characters who spend the most time together on screen. It's only natural that people would come to the conclusion that they could become lovers. But officially, they have also become best friends. They have grown to each other to trust each other on that level. Yes, it's not a natural progression of of well, their characters. Yeah. Not yeah. how, how yeah. is not to the extent that it was presented in canon, but um, that's the beauty of fan fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I would say that 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 is my favorite trope, uh, my favorite. Uh, trend in the Zootopia fandom that many agree that uh, Judy and Nick would make a good, good couple. They would. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Guardian yeah. Blue, for instance, is able to carry that idea through incredibly well. The main, the main drive of that, that fic is really the, the, the development of Nick and Judy's relationship. All right. Can we go on to the final question? Yes. Great, because yes. I'm tired. What universe... And we're going to inevitably spend a lot of time on this question as well, because it's a deep one. What universe would you like to see most do a crossover with Zootopia? Either Fusion of the Worlds or the two existing together? Uh, I don't know. I don't often think about crossovers. Yeah. Same. Uh, I mean... I guess the one I've tried to cross over just because I like the post-apocalypse sort of thing is like the, you know, I mean, I tried crossing the road over with that Zootopia. Like, like what if the whole system breaks down? I know that's kind of like a downer subject, but I think it's it's interesting to see stuff along those lines of like, you know, what happens when there's a crisis? Like we saw a little bit of it in the movie when, with the Night Howlers thing. What if there's like a larger crisis and like, and that that order breaks down. Like, how would they deal with it? You know. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I'm still trying trying to think about something that would cross over well. It's really okay. tricky. Okay. I'll call back to what I believe is the very first thing I created under this name, and that was. A crossover with Armello. It didn't. Oh God, yeah. I don't know why I didn't even think of that. Yeah, I abandoned that fic pretty quickly once I realized that I I really didn't know what I was doing. With yeah. The subject. See, but that actually is a very good place to to make a crossover if I ever did one, because for one, it's a self-contained universe. <clears throat> that has no human element the same way Zootopia does and it while it does include like uh, lizards and birds in, in the mix as well and amphibians and all that um, if you were to make that a crossover with Zootopia, you could like pass that up as just being fantasy races in in you know, in that universe or something. Um, yeah, that's how I uh, tried to portray it in that first fanfic I made. Yeah, and then the universe of Armello could be kind of like our universe's um, generic fantasy setting or like 
archetypical fantasy setting, the same way that the Lord of the Rings kind of set the standard for fantasy settings in Western stories nowadays. You um, heard it here fo first, but not really. Uh, we like our mellow. I, uh, Silver Chase, and I certainly do. I have yet to play it, but I have heard good things about it. Um, My lot of games to, to look at. <laughs> if you can tolerate a lot of RNG, then it's a game for you. If not, it uh, most definitely isn't. Well, it's it's kind of on a level beyond random number generation, because the game actually physically simulates the dice moving around. Yes, it's uh, a. It's a dice-driven game, then. It's it's a, a um, dice. it's a video game de I designed around like it being a virtual board game. Um, so it has three decks of cards. Um, it has um, you know, player. All right. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got to end this show someday. Yeah. Go uh. ahead. Um, you I guess we made the point that Mellow would, yeah. Any other ideas for crossovers? Nothing? No. That's all I got. Great. Then... I would like to thank all of you for putting up with this. We have reached four hours into this stream. Uh, well, into this show. This has to be on the long side for a GTT. We really chatted, and we only have like, yeah. three green texts to go through. Yeah, um, I'm a very long. talkative person. If I'm, if it's something that I'm interested in, so I apologize if I stretched it out a little bit too much. Oh, I'm sure I'll edit it down to a manageable three hours and a half. <laughs> Cut the break out. Because we got a lot going on here. Yeah. I bet you could cut out uh, at least an hour if you remove my Jeff Goldblum like uh uh uh. <laughs> All right, so now I'm debating if I should have you all ask each other a question, but that's something we've already been doing a lot of. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Why not? As is tradition with Green Tech Theater. Uh, Maind, I'll start with you. Do you have any questions to ask of everyone else? Oh man, that's um... I actually, I got one for Rob. You've uh, been working on Mystic, you know, the Mystic um, Springs comic for, for a long time now. Do you have any comics planned after that, or are you going to take a break from comics when you finally uh, close that one out? Oh, thanks for the question. Yes, um, I actually do have several other comic ideas. You know, that's that's the beauty of working on a project for this long because you come up with ideas and you just write them down and uh, get ready for the time when you can actually work on them. I uh, I plan to uh, make a few te comic idea teasers and release them. Uh, when the co the current Mystic Strip Search comic ends and uh, maybe make a poll of which one uh, piques the interests of the people the most. Nice. Alright, and, right, and I... Rob? Uh, let's see. I would ask... Uh, both of you, which is the work that you are the most proud of? Oh, uh, I mean, you can take that question first. Um, shit, that's tough. Uh, I guess most proud of bringing to completion would probably be the story of the bomber or whatever. Oh, uh, that yeah. ended up being real slogs trying to get that one over the finish line. Um, and there was a lot of like interest and uh, motivation initially, and then. You know, people's, uh, including mine, interest tapered off and delays happened. So it was a uh, ended up being a real effort to to pull that over the finish line. Maybe not the most amazing story, but it was still a cool collaborative project that you know involved a lot of people on the on the thread in some capacity. 
yeah, you did make it through. And I was one of the people who helped along with uh, OJ and Lulu as well, who who backed up with uh, uh, illustrations. Yeah. I think I think maybe whether or not you think it's like critically good or not, it was a, a major accomplishment. Thank you. That's really great. Yeah. It was it was very nice. Um, it's, I especially liked OJ's part in it. He he brought a lot to it. The animated part. Oh. That was impressive. I'm very impressed at how OJ can just punch that thing, that sort of thing out. It, it almost seems effortless when he does it. Yeah, I mean, I was with him on the phone as he was like storyboarding uh, the the prior parts. Um, that was a lot of fun working that working that out with him. Uh, Absolutely I, hardcore. If you are finished with your thoughts, I I will move on to mine. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Right, thank you. Um, I did a cursory look through the pictures that I've drawn, and while none really stand out to me as the one that I'm really the most proud of so far, um, I feel like the one one of the ones that I was most passionate about and the one that I felt most satisfied with once it was completed was probably the few pictures that I draw that that I drew of um, of gender swap Judy um, I ultimately didn't do as much of it with it as I thought I would or at least wanted to but I really felt like I I was doing something that I wanted to do when I was doing that. Um, and I would like to maybe take a shot at that again in the future to to be able to tackle it better with now that I have a little bit more experience under my belt. Oh, well, very cool. What a cool. I just don't know how big the audience is for that, but who cares? Uh, depend, I'm depend, for myself. I, I I personally really like gender swapped like Jude the dude on Nikki. Oh yeah. But... Well, same yeah. Making things for yourself is the ultimate power move of creative expression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is the reason why you do it. I I've then again I've made much more self indulgent stuff than that, so I, I guess it's not that bad. I yeah um. I would I would be interested in one day going back and doing more of that, but I have a lot of things to get through right now, you know, that what I'm doing with Silver Chase, what I'm doing for the advent calendar, what I'm gonna be doing after both of those are completed, like the dream comic. I uh, and a few other things that are scattered around that I'm also thinking about getting through sooner than later, but once I'm through with that, yeah, possibly. Sounds like you got a lot on your plate. Yes, I've actually never had this much material to work with before. Welcome to my work. <laughs> You're on a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't get to it soon enough. And... So it goes... Oh. Alright, and... Tangerine, uh, it's time for you to ask a question to the other guests. What would you like um, to ask them? <laughs> I didn't really think about this. Uh, I don't want to just not ask anything, but I don't really have anything, unfortunately. I think I'll just pass on it, I'm sorry. All right, on my comic, I'm not going to pressure you into asking anything. So at that, we finally made it, and more importantly, I finally made it. Four hours, six minutes in to this. We didn't. We we still have one thing. One thing to do. What is that? Silver. 
you you didn't ask us a question. Fine, I will ask you a question. <laughs> it is the exact same question I asked on the very previous Green Tech Theater where I was a guest, and that is Sheriff's Pleat I'll phrase it as a question. What have you learned recently? It can be a major life lesson or it can just be a silly fact you just learned. Hmm. What 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 did I learn recently? Uh, I need to think. Anyone else? Um, I recently learned how much of a connection I can get from nature. Um, not probably not to the extent that I will have in the future because I don't know that yet. But um, over the course of the last month or last few weeks, I'm I've started taking more frequent walks through the woods behind my house, and. It's only now that I think I've truly begun to realize just how much this benefits me, because I often get troubled by how much I think in a, in a given day. My mind is basically never not I, in overdrive, and I can't really do much to, to slow that down I, in normal circumstances. Um, but when I'm just walking by myself in the woods, and I'm just listening to the natural ambiance, um, I feel like it's one of the only places I know of right now where I can actually just make my thoughts clear and not be thinking about every little thing at once and scrutinizing every little detail around me. And, um... It's it's very comforting, and I have so far found a great deal of peace from it. That's why that's what motivated me to draw that one picture a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Which one? I'll post it here again. Okay. It's the one you see as his profile picture currently. Yeah. Oh. Uh, ah. Uh, okay. Which for everyone who, everyone in the audience who obviously isn't seeing that, it's uh, Tangerine's drawing of uh, his character standing in the in the woods in the nighttime. Meditating. Well, fully on that on that walking to clear your head thing, though I do that a lot too. Just go for a walk in the nearby park. It's actually supposed to be twilight, but I'm not sure if I conveyed that incredibly well. Um, it's just supposed to be that time immediately after sunset where the moon is only just rising above the, the above the mountains um uh, where there's just you. a little bit of day uh, waiting daylight left enough to see without a flashlight that's my favorite time of the day as it turns out i can get that as it and it also turns out that fennecs are crepuscular animals which means that they're most active around sunrise and sunset and not afternoon or night Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I I kind of heard uh, things of these uh, most desert ma uh, most desert mammals are um, active during this time because at night it's too cold, the day is too too hot. Yes. They, so they limit their uh, actions, their huntings uh, during the sunset and sunrise period. Mm -hmm. All right. I didn't even uh, think about it. Yeah, fennec, fennec foxes are desert mammals. We're still dragging this stream out. <laughs> we gotta hit uh, 3 o'clock or whatever, so we hit 4 hours exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of needed about uh, stuff that I learned recently that is actually something new that I didn't know yet. Um, I actually only recently learned that there is a type of animal called legless lizard that is very different from a snake because snakes don't have eyelids and legless lizards are uh, actually evolved like lizards just without legs so they so there is a difference between a legless lizard and a snake <laughs> i well, didn't know that Snakes at one point had legs, then they evolved to not have them anymore. 
Well, I guess they wouldn't be snakes at that time, but, you know, <laughs> ancestors of snakes. Legful snakes. Leggy snakes? <laughs> That'd be a creepy thought. Is that main word aren't legs those, on a... Aren't those just anthropomorphic snakes? Yeah, basically, there's a bunch of mythology about them snake people living on the ground. <laughs> no, I mean like snake personas. Wait, well, no, yeah. that wouldn't be, that would be a scale persona? I, I don't that know. That would be a naga. <laughs> well, nagas don't have nagas legs. Don't, nagas don't have But they're legs. snakes, right? Yes, technically they are, but... <laughs> uh, I don't know, this hurts my head. <laughs> All right, then let's stop thinking about snakes and legless lizards. Mained, uh, <laughs> what interesting thing have you learned recently? Recently regarding... Oh, man. Uh, you mean just with, with regarding to, like, species or something? Nope, anything at all. Anything that has helped you in your life or just trivia you've learned? And Anything that's interesting. I'm on a weird blank right now. But, uh, I don't know. Yep, no, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Nothing worth mentioning right now. All right. A... You, learned, you learned a new recipe or something, like anything on the daily life. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I did actually. I did, I did, learn I did try baking recently, and that, that ended up being pretty good. I did a recipe of my, uh, my grandmother's, my late grandmother's, um, that was my first baked thing, and actually it turned out pretty good. So happy with that. What did you choose? Easier bake? than I thought. Uh, these uh, fudge bar things. Ah, oh, lovely. Wait. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Rob, were you gonna say something? No. Oh, okay. Well, I'll share the, I'll share the thing I learned. A standard frisbee can hold 3.5 pounds of liquid. Pints, <laughs> not pounds. Uh, I, I will use this knowledge very well. You can drink beer, you can drink three and a half beers out of a frisbee. Oh. May, may I ask how you learned this? I watched a YouTube video. I see. <laughs> I was watching this overnight during one of my breaks while I was eating food. <laughs> and I learned that, yeah, well, that you can put three and a half beers in a frisbee. Well, yeah. How did they come to this conclusion? They did it. <laughs> Why? Because, <laughs> uh, well, because you know, ultimate frisbee is a thing, and there are, you know, regulation. There's you know a regulation disc uh, oh, okay. size, and that standard size holds three and a half pints of beer or any liquid okay but the people in the youtube video why did they measure frisbees <laughs> yeah i'm just wondering why you would need to know the metric volume of a frisbee hey i didn't say any of this stuff i learned is useful i just said it was interesting are yeah, you interested <laughs> i can't i i am fascinated silver chase <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. It, it's great. <laughs> All right. Finally, actually, we are done. We are four hours and 15 minutes into. Bam! That didn't show. take long. Uh, 20 hours into this death stream overall. And okay, let me drag this out further. What are you going to do after this? <laughs> watch. Chill, then sleep for real. Oh, you're, I thought you were going to um, go the whole 24 hours of streaming. Oh, I am. I, oh, okay. you meant after this, mean this show, not... Okay. Yeah. I will be staying on and finishing, and then I will spend the rest of my day awake and okay, cool. go to sleep as usual. Cool. Nice. And pretend yeah, that this happened. <laughs> I'm going to stick around and watch. I actually was oh, yeah. sculpting during the stream, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to drop on and stream that again. I have to find but a way to go to sleep and wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Oof. Good luck. Luck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Green. Thank you. All right, finally, we're free. 
this show's finally yeah. done. How, how do we take? How did it take this long? I didn't even put that many green text in this, and then we I didn't guess, even get that many questions. I we guess we just talking. Guess I guess you just chose some really interesting guests, Silver Chase. Like to talk. <laughs> I'll retire champion of Green Text Theater then. All right. Thank it you all great. for showing up. Audience, thank you for trying to put up with four hours and 17 minutes of this. I'm sorry. I will finish my Bye, illustration bro. for this. I'm not. It was enough. great. And I'm glad that I could be a part of it. Yeah. Goodbye, guys. All right. Have a good Goodbye. rest of your day. I regret this. <laughs> <laughs>